my God. All right, I don't know if anybody can see this yet because I'm not logged in nowhere yet. Okay, so I'm trying to get everything up and running right now. And as y'all see, it is a little lot behind. Two hours late. Um, but we here. Let's see. I'm trying to log everything in right now to see what's happening. Bear with me, guys. 
we go later than this on later's night, ladies night anyway. So I'm figuring people should be still awake and up or just getting here. However, all right, let's see. Delete this. All right, so live, where we at? Okay, so I can see the live there. All right, guys, I'm working on it. Why is it saying? All right, let's see what's happening. Okay, so I can see that uh, live is up. I think we're good. Oh. All right, so we got that. Let me see. Can I see? Got it. All right. Hey, Melba. Melba, can you hear me? Okay, um, ladies night link is going up. It's on Facebook already. Let me see if she can hear me because oh, hold on. Let's see. Hey, um, all right, y'all should be able to hear. Link is going up. I'm Facebook already. Okay, good. So y'all can hear. Um, let's see what else I need to do. So links on Facebook. Let me log into Facebook. Hey, AQ. I'm amazing. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Zach. All right. So I'm going to go into Facebook. Oh, let me, I'm going to get this thing up here. So. Y'all, hopefully, I'm not letting down. Oh. Okay, so I'm trying to get the live straight on all this stuff, y'all. Um, the show must go on. We are a little behind, a lot behind, but we'll discuss. We'll discuss and chat in a minute. Okay. Let me get y'all up and running. So that way we good to go. Um, ladies night, the show must go on. So I'm going live. I'm live on, I'm in the meet. So if anybody wants to come into the meet, I'm here. The link is actually on Facebook right now. I didn't put it in the community tab of YouTube. Y'all bear with me, please. It's been a it's been a time, okay? So and all good things, just so y'all yeah, we know all good things, but just still a lot.
Hey, Joshua. Um, I sent everybody the link, so I'm now. <laughs> I know, right? So, y'all, I'm going to tell y'all, like, it has been, and, and I'm going to say, like I said, it's been a lot, but it is good a lot, but still a lot. And I got a couple of things that, I mean, y'all might want to agree with or disagree with, or y'all can, you know, enlighten me as to how y'all feel about them. But, um, okay, so Facebook is now on. So I got Facebook. Y'all a little bit on, on crooked, but y'all here. Um. So I got Facebook, I got the meeting is up. All right, maybe I should do a TikTok. I don't know. I'm gonna just do y'all for right now. But anyway, so y'all, I was tired. Hey Aaron, I have been extremely, extremely exhausted. Mind y'all, I feel like the amount of exhausted that I have been is not the equivalent of the amount of stuff that I have been doing. Um, which, hey, Kita, which lets me know that either I'm, like, on drain from other people's stuff or just people being around. So, as y'all know, it is holiday season and whatnot, and um, I have family here which has been amazing because my brother came in um, from out of town for my niece's graduation. And that was awesome. Like literally she just um, graduated from college, um, but she's still doing her thing. So, you know, um, hey Sylvia. But the thing that I wanted to talk to y'all about is, listen, so and I'm gonna start from earlier this morning. This morning, I woke up around 6 o'clock, and, well, hold on, this is an ongoing thing, but I'm going to give y'all the day, and then I'll go back. So I woke up around 6 o'clock, and as I'm laying there, I'm like, God, I'm tired. How you doing, Sylvia? Um, and I'm like, God, I'm tired. God, I'm tired. And I wanted to make sure, because everybody's been helping me get stuff together, so two, two of my sons are here, my brother's here. Um, and so, you know, it's this thing, it's a running joke in a family as to how when people show up, I be having work to do. And it's a real thing because, you know, why not? <laughs> so what happened was yesterday we ended up starting early and nobody got to eat until later. So they was on, you know, like you got me fucked up move from that. So I was like, okay, this morning, God, I'm tired. And I didn't want to get up, but then I'm like, okay, I got good intentions. So I was going to do a reading first. And no, I was going to go take a shower, do a reading, get the food together. So then that way, by the time, you know, everybody got with me, food would be ready. I would have coffee, orange juice, all that stuff. Okay, didn't go as planned. So when I got in the shower this morning, literally I'm like in there talking to God. I'm like, God, I don't know what's happening. But my energy lately has not been the equivalent of, okay? And I'm a, a energizer bunny, just so y'all know. Like, I get up early, I go to bed early, I be getting stuff done. Like, that motto, that slogan that the Army got do, I do more by 6 a.m. than most people do all day, that's me, okay? But lately, it hasn't been, it, the math ain't been mathing. So, somebody sent me an email and that was the first thing I looked at. And I'm like, um, the person said, um, you are, no, they said, I'm going to get straight to the point. Um, you would be reach a, a hundred K if you wasn't living in the past. So instantly it, it blew me because in my mind, I'm like, people get on my nerves and people get on my nerves because people will try to tell you how to heal. People will tell you how to live your life. They won't know nothing about you behind the scenes. All they see is what I do in, on this camera, but they don't know like my actual life and what I do, like the amount of stuff that I do. So I instantly like, but, but it's stuck in my mind. So as I'm standing in the shower, 
I'm like, okay. And then it started going to this thing. So my my ring camera that is above my garage. Hey Melba. Exactly. That's but but see, this is the thing. And so it, it threw me. So um my ring camera that's been up for months or maybe about a year or so is on a solar panel. But a couple of days, about a week or a week ago, it started throwing an alert saying that it can't go live because there's a drain on the battery. Um, you are very focused on present and future. Yes, I'm very. But see, this is the thing. And, and this is another thing that actually got me to where I'm at right now. So. The, the ring, the solar panel is fine because I'm looking at the solar panel. Solar panel is fine, except for the fact that the solar panel, the way the sun comes in my uh, at my house, it starts that way, which I think is east or something. And then it goes this way around to the house. But anyway, so the amount of light that's happening on the solar panel is not the equivalent of like able to charge it. So I guess what was happening is it was charging, but it wasn't charging fully. Okay, so anyway, long story short, the battery started throwing an alert saying that you got to charge the battery because the battery is dead. So at nighttime and something happened at my house the other night and I'm saying, like, I'm trying to look at the camera. It wasn't nothing bad, but I'm trying to look at the camera to see what was happening. And it's saying I can't, it can't go live because the battery's dead, right? Hey, Larisha, I sent you the link already. So I go to I, I find go to find a battery, the charger. So I, I take the batteries down and I go ahead and put them on a the charger. So I'm telling my brother, I'm like, why is it taking so long for them to charge? Because mind you, it was like three, four hours later and the batteries are still like not charged, right? Um, you must you must highlight your post to move forward. Remembering isn't attempting to remain. You are just reflecting and making sure not to do it again. Yes, exactly, Melba. So now it's plugged into a constant, a consistent electrical source, right? To the wall. And so as I'm standing in the shower, my job, I'm, I'm going over all these things because nothing is a coincidence, all right? Nothing is a coincidence. Everything happens for a reason. So I'm standing in the shower, I'm steady talking to God like God, and I'm still thinking about what this person is saying. Like, you living in the past, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you you don't even know me. So, God, I'm tired. And as the whole two years was playing out, mind you, and then I had to go back further because I got married in 2019. So, that's when the triggers started happening. That's when the stress to my life, to my body started happening, right? And so, but I only equi- uh, equated it to the after I dropped the person off and moving to moving forward. So mind you, I'm fighting with the person. I'm fighting with people I don't know. I'm fighting with invisible spirits because I'm dealing with uh, spiritual warfare. I'm dealing with freaking. Um, it was funny because I posted a reading and um, I put it on. I've been putting them on premiere so that way y'all know when they show up. And um, Lexi, Lexi put in there, she's fighting with YouTube. I'm fighting with YouTube because my, my, something's happening with my channel. And every time, I, if, I call, if I do something like where I go to talk to them or something, then all of a sudden it fixes. But for some reason, YouTube is fucking with my numbers and they're, but okay, neither here nor there. I just do the work. So I'm consistently doing and producing, having to, to now where I'm just producing one video a day. Like, okay. Because I'm tired. I was producing, 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 producing videos and content. And I'm watching smaller channels shoot past me, which I don't care. It is what it is. Okay. But meanwhile, these are all things that are happening and all this whole, whole long time. But this is what was just said the other day. That's what she just said. So God, and I cried uh, like a while back saying, God, I'm tired. God, I'm tired. And I understand God won't put on you more than you can bear, more more than you can handle. But guess what? It was more than I can bear, more than I can handle. I'm tired. Um, My money got messed up. My living arrangements got messed up. My, like, and I, 
like what did i do like i'm a person i'm not gonna like blame people i started asking god what did i do what did i do wrong that was that i deserve this like what did i do wrong okay so again the the conversation was you didn't do anything wrong i was trying to i had to show you i had to show you what was happening okay so i wasn't trying to punish you i was trying to show you okay so um i'm standing in the shower still mind y'all all these things are playing through my brain this morning right because i'm tired but yet i'm still working so in my mind i'm like okay for so uh, two years y'all i love you um y'all amazing oh what you got there? My brother been treating me so good, y'all. I was already telling him that you was up in here. What you got there? I was telling him about this morning when I. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I'm tired, but I'm still doing. And so it went to um, two years, two years of me fighting, like continuing to push through because I'm a person who will push through. I'm a person who will continue to work as hard as I can, no matter what. So, okay, you're in trauma and you're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting. Okay, so now certain things are starting to b release and certain things are starting to back up. Certain things are starting to like, you know, release and do whatever. And then it dawned on me. Okay, you was fighting as hard as you could then, but as you are getting tired, you only doing a little bit. You are, <laughs> Melba said, hey brother. <laughs> Now you're only starting to do a little bit like my battery's winding down, right? Because I'm being a, like, it's, it's too much. And I'm saying, God is too much. Like, and I'm not questioning God. Um, I'm just going to continue to do it. Cause I keep hearing the thing. Did you die? <laughs> Did you die? You, you didn't die. You're still alive. Melba said, Hey brother with the eyes. <laughs> he said, what's up Melba? Um, so I'm standing there and then I'm like, damn, it reminded me of the freaking battery. Like the battery died because it wasn't getting a consistent source of sunlight. It wasn't, it wasn't connected to the source. It had to go get plugged in to the source in order to get a full, complete charge. Look at her, nice goatee, nice braids. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all epiphany moment okay you you still keep giving it's like that battery you got to get close to the charge and i'm like waiting so i hear my brother and i'm coming down the hallway i didn't know who it was but i was hoping it was him because literally i i had the that's a full beard oh <laughs> so that's a full beard <laughs> Okay. Hey, yo, we, we gotta tell them we have movement scheduled for seven thirty, right? I, right, right. Okay. Yes. So it's that, and mind you, all this is happening in the morning. Seven, right. seven. Now he here. We got movement. He up. So I'm like calling out to the hello. <laughs> he like, huh? I'm downstairs already. So I call him in, and I'm like, listen, this what happened. So I'm telling him how I'm standing in the shower. What happened? I woke up. I was tired, and then and then it dawned on me about that battery. And then I'm over here like, we keep giving, we keep doing, we keep giving, we give a little bit more, we keep doing, and each time it's draining our battery pack. And sometimes we got to connect to the thing that makes us fully charged. Hey, Lamar, this the other thing so we got to replay back because now we have my niece's graduation and so my niece's graduation a guy shows up what, what's his name the the one that said you last time i seen you was happy oh jared okay so a family member basically we come out with everybody gathering and he looks at me and he like and mind you I, i'm okay i haven't seen you in, in since alana's grad high school graduation high school graduation we had, we had a college graduation literally graduation to graduation no joke he looks dead at me he says damn the last time i seen you you were so happy and i'm thinking the first thing that came out of my mouth was 
and then a nigga started and uh, no and i said and then i got married yeah and he went to do this and my brother stopped him <laughs> like nah <laughs> i said no nah, no nah, we only celebrate wins we only celebrate wins this is not a win you know what i mean <laughs> and i said and i told him i said and now i just got a divorce he said damn what you trying to blame it on me yeah I say, yeah. I say yeah yeah so listen so later on that day he, we was in a, we got done and we can't we had to come home before we went back to her um the party right so my brother said something to me i was like off in a daze and i'm like he what you say to me that made me say that when what when i when i said damn that fuck with me at the graduation because i didn't think about it but it kind of fucked with me a little bit remember I oh was i was like damn i was like damn you know it's crazy that he correlated the last time he's seen you with your happiness and he remembers that because he says damn last time i see you you was happy not last time i see you you know what i mean you was five foot tall or you know you whatever he said last time i see you you were happy and for somebody to actually hone in on that one characteristic of you is deep that mean you were fucking glowing you know what i'm saying you he was probably kind of hating on your happiness like <laughs> literally that's what he said and then later on it started playing in my mind i'm like on oh, stuck for a minute and i'm like and then a nigga inserted themselves into into my my shit. like i can remember how happy i was and it was fucked up and they said congratulations to Carolina. appreciate y'all appreciate y'all love is love what's up lamar so Keisa said that's really deep. yes it's crazy because it made me now think like what the fuck was different because i remember and y'all just heard me say because somebody on here said you, you about to make me cry i said i was happy and i don't know like m because now i'm different and so now i gotta figure out what's gonna make me happy and the day he saw me i hadn't even seen the nigga that inserted himself in, in, into my my shit i was going to see him later so damn like that fuck with me i ain't gonna lie like oh shit but mind you i had just said that hey reggie so now i'm over here and i was talking to my brother we riding you know what i'm saying and i'm like out here and i'm telling him i'm like it's crazy how we don't I'm different now. I'm different now than I was before. And if a person could identify that I was happy, I didn't need nobody else to come into my life or to insert themselves. I had had um Reggie saying what's up. Yo, what up, Reggie? What's good, baby? I had had everything that I needed. Like literally, they was calling me the girl that had everything. Like that's what these people was calling me. And I felt like I wanted or I, I needed to be married or because I, again i'm a person i feel like I, I should be married i don't want to be out in the streets and you know all this other stuff and maybe it was just the wrong person um what, what mommy say mommy said something wrong man right right situation wrong man or something i don't know but i just heard usher uh good good he said uh uh right place wrong uh, time wrong time yeah okay so that is the situation he at my house reggie so that's the thing sometimes we don't realize like all of these things but it, to me it now starts right one me. right place wrong time was he the right one nah he wasn't a, he wasn't the right one but i'm just saying that was what usher said oh yeah that would nah i don't I, I don't i don't think he was the right one yeah but i told you i told you i told you that though like i told you that my brother literally told me stay at his house do not go nowhere near that nigga. stay here he literally tried to save me that night and i didn't listen i mean let me honest with you. So I, you know for me like i know i know dudes right like he he's a decent dude to be around for me you know what i mean like to know him as a dude and know what dudes you know what i mean the type of shit we get into <laughs> he's the type of dude that i understand but for a female and let alone my sister nah i know i know his intentions he he, he it ain't 
it's it's not it's not official. Reggie right? Roseanne can't tell her nothing. Can't tell her, <laughs> can't tell her shit. Reggie needing to touch the stove so sometimes. Reggie, Reggie, I told I even told her, I was like, yeah. Nah, this ain't it. Like like he did. I don't give a fuck about a picture that I sent you. This ain't it. Like you know what I mean? Because he actually started too. That's the thing. He sent me a picture, and that's what triggered the whole thing. Because I'm like, damn, I love him. Like the picture for some reason took me back to that time, and it made me see him. Look, that's brother's intuition. Yeah. That might have been the, the play where God was saying, don't touch the stove. But he he did tell me, yeah. don't touch the stove. Yeah. <laughs> don't touch the stove. But this the thing. Fuck all that. The point of it is, is now, how do I get... No, 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 no. I don't fuck all that. We can't skip past that because that's, that's a prevalent part of uh, of how how we got here because you it, it's like you had you had you had choice you had a choice to not be where we're at right and you said i love him i did no i got so fucking tired of hearing that <laughs> i ain't gonna lie to you i'm glad that we're here right now i ain't gonna lie to you that was like the fucking worst slogan in the world right? <laughs> I love him. I like, yeah, she shut the fuck up with that i still love him that's cool. <laughs> He's eleven. Hey, yo, that shit was annoying. Yo, I still as love fuck. him. That's the thing. I still love him, but I know we can't exist. Yeah, I mean, y'all got so much history, so it's it's really it's for one, it's not nobody's business, right? But y'all got so much history that I think a lot of people don't know. So even if you, even if you know, you tell whatever whatever part that you're in right now, whatever phase you want to speak about, there's so much more that people don't know, yes. right? And if you sat down and you Fucking went from A to Z. Ladies' night would turn into fucking uh, uh, an emotion night for everybody because it will it will be relatable to all women, right? They all got that one man that they that they can connect with, you know, or two, but right? whatever you went to, ladies, uh, I don't judge. Um, that, I they can, that they can that connect with, and and they can they, they you know the sim the stories are similar, you know. So y'all, last night I'm riding with my brother, and now I'm like in a in an emotional state right now because literally it has been the tricking of my mind and then i'm sorry i'm riding ahead i'm saying it is <laughs> you move me <laughs> hey michael oh, i'm glad man. to see you you laughing thanks brother <laughs> i'm still waiting for that connection okay so listen y'all so then it replayed in my mind i went back to the first husband and i'm saying that's my oldest two kids father right and we ain't gonna get into too much but i'm gonna just tell y'all what i said to my brother i said Oh no, hold on. Ask the question that you asked me. What you asked me that triggered the whole thing. Hold on, we pardon? Because I mean, I'm going right, to I'm 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 on the pod. No, I don't know. I go with it. What you said, what you asked me? I don't know if I'm going to on this path though. I mean, I'm, we just going to go because we just, we here now. Donnie, because we, we, we two hours late on ladies night. This is what I'm trying to explain them. We just got here. I, I know. I see an alert when I, and I rush home. I said, oh shit. We we late because we've been working all day, so I know her ass was tired. Oh, I was so, asleep. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I went to I sleep. Know. I know. It kept me up all fucking day, and and your ass went to sleep as soon as Look, I left. Mel was still on the on the brother. Mel was said nice pants. Mel was. <laughs> hey Mel, but let me give you a three sixty real quick, man. And hold on, you got to see the boots. Okay, too. hold on. Hold on. You, yeah, you all, hold on. You hold on. Let me have my dick prank because I don't want y'all be going crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to move your shoulder out the way. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're crazy. He look, he, he right, he got, hold on, you got to see the shoulder shoe. Oh, this, nah, my knee hurt. I can't really pick my leg up like that. I <laughs> put it right here on the, I, on the thing. I, I take put it, it right here. Put it right here. Oh, they can't see that. Nah, I take it off for you, though. Not too crazy. <laughs> Not too crazy. I mean, it's just a little boot. Melba said crazy. he took you back to a different time frame and crazy. sending that pic. Let it go frozen. Yes. All right. But anyway. All right. So ask the question. What, what triggered the whole, the whole, you win? Okay. I, I, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not even gonna sit here and walk the people down. I don't really remember what we said because okay, so, I'm much, tell you. so much was said at that time. And you I think asked we were just about love. Them. You asked me about love. You okay. asked me. You said, "Can a person really love you?" That don't oh no 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 no. That's not that's not that's not what I said. That's not what I said. Okay, I got it. I got it. What I said was that I said, you know, it's hard for. No, I, I said I said. I said you know the problem with, with with people saying and being in love is that those who say that they love you, right? They don't know how to love anyway and have never been loved. 
So how can they say they love you and you accept that when they don't even know how to love themselves? Right. Reggie, if you're talking about you about to talk heavy, hit the link on my um, page on Facebook and come into the chat. You'll, they'll be able to see you. So come to the chat. Um, Lexa said, love can be had for love's gone ghost, but now a specific boundary set in place. You damn right, Lexi. Um, I'll join in a minute. That's Lexi saying she'll join in a minute. So, um, the battery tired, damn right, uh, Larisha. The battery tired. Joshua said them boots are fire. Um, Melba said nice fit, fit check, fit check, damn right. The what she say, fit check, fit check, make your bitch sweat. <laughs> That's okay. okay. Um, Reggie, hit the link and go into the uh chat. So hold on, I, I don't know, I don't know if you spoke about this, and I hate to, I hate to backtrack, but you you talked about the battery, right? Yeah, I'm, I, I wasn't done. That's still the battery's still working though. We still here. So the battery analogy to me was so fitting and so relatable, and I never thought about this. This was some shit that hit me when she was like, "Hey, hey, Don, is that you?" <laughs> you know, because I was up trying, you know, trying to make make motherfucking the call because we had a seven thirty movement. You know, I'm I'm an old military guy. I don't, I don't miss movement. You know what I'm saying? So I, she probably thought I was in that joint. You know what I mean? Sleeping, but I was up. You know what I mean? Rocking and rolling. So she called me and she was like, "Yeah, I got some shit I want to share with you." And I was like, "In my mind, not right now. I just got up. I just really <laughs> trying, you know, go get my mind prepared for this work day because I know you got some shit that you gonna want us to do and it's gonna take longer than four hours. I know I gave you a four hour block, but I already know we're gonna be in the street all day. <laughs> but when she started talking, she told me about the battery. She was like, you know what? I, I was I was thinking and I was thinking about that goddamn solar power and how the solar power is supposed to keep the battery charged, but you have to go back to the source sometimes to be fully charged. Now mind y'all, the battery dead on the solar power. That bitch yeah, ain't even getting yeah. that bitch dead. But but it's been up there for how, Thanks, many, how many years? Uh, it's been up there for about a year, I think. It's been up there for about a year, running on solar power. You know what I mean? Running on, and I'll and I'll correlate it to an analogy of an a automatic. This is what is anticipated, and this is normal. This is a normalized type of thing. It's expected, and it's supposed to work a certain way, right? But it's not working that way. Right, and look how long it took for you to uh, to realize it wasn't working that way, and before you corrected it. And then, what did we have to do? We had to charge it up from the source, and then reroute the solar power and move it to ensure that you know. And that analogy is there, you know, for for people. You got to lose and move people uh, in and out of your life to be able to you know maintain your energy and make sure that that you constantly are. Growing for one that you're that you're strong enough to even and and en en engage with these people and most of all keep your own sanity. You know what I mean? Damn right. Because we literally had to move it in order to make sure now it's getting the amount of sun that it should be getting. But as long as it's been on that wall for a whole year, I'm thinking it's working right. Because I think I think this is all the point we didn't pod we didn't pod, but now we're talking about it. When it was initially put up, it was good enough. It, it was good enough. It was good Damn enough. right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I chose that spot because I'm like, okay, at the time, this is where the sun was. It was good enough, but things change. Things change. And we have to be able to adapt and change with them. But at what point do we, right? Because sometimes it takes it takes some longer than others to make that change. Somebody would have noticed that say, oh shit, my battery ain't been charged. Let me go ahead and move that ASAP. Yep. But it was working. <laughs> but it was working. It was working until it didn't, to the point where the shit was dead. And I mean, when it said it couldn't go live, I'm trying to hit the live view and it said it can't go live because it's dead. Like me tonight. I couldn't go live because I was on that couch sleep. I was knocked out. Mind you, everything we did was positive, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. We didn't do did so much positive stuff. Okay, so what we going to start, what, yesterday? Uh, the minute he showed up. He literally went in and the minute, the, stuff that he did, the minute he showed up, he literally went in on stuff that he didn't have to do at all, period. What was the first thing we did? He took me to grocery store work because, as y'all know, I don't got no car right now. So gro we went grocery store. Where else we got? We went Lowe's. Lowe's. Looking for a new stove because I needed a new stove. Um, Couldn't find no stove. Ain't no stove in Georgia. Now, hold on. Mind y'all. This is funny shit. I hate to interrupt. We went to fucking Lowe's, right? Now, <laughs> now mind you, hold on. We went to the grocery store. You know what I mean? We got Buku groceries. We were ready to throw down. <laughs> then we go to Lowe's to get a new stove to cook the stuff that we went to the goddamn 
Georgia again. But for some reason in Georgia, they don't believe in stoves, right? That's not like that's not like a thing that they use in their house on a regular. So when we go to Lowe's, then Lowe's is like, oh yeah, we got shit on the floor. A lot of it. But it ain't in stock. Therefore, you can't have it, right? And although you see it, it's a tangible thing, you can touch it, you can't have it, right? And she was like, So, so can we order it? They said, No, you can't have it. Period. If it's not in stock, you can't have it. Now, first of all, we went from and my me, I'm a I'm a broke nigga. So I'm like, hey Ty, look at the 299 stove. She was like, I don't really want that one. The one I wanted was this. I was like, well, just check that one out because at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Just put it in the house. You know what I mean? It's just it's something functional for you. Cause, and at the end of the day, when you're ready to change it out, you can change it out. It's a cheap stove. You can sell it for 700 once you get it. Mind y'all, I got a $32,000 kitchen though. Nigga, we Mind went you. from a 299 <laughs> that we ain't got it to a 2000 we ain't got it. They weren't trying to make no money in loads. Like literally, listen, I don't know if y'all seen my kitchen, but my kitchen was not that kitchen when I got here. My kitchen was some, he used to talk shit about the last kitchen. Trash. And, but we upgraded it. So I upgraded it in what, 2017? Mm. 2017, I upgraded the kitchen. Was it 2017 or 2016? Point of it is, is they ain't handle stove. And the point of it is, is my kitchen expensive as fuck. And another point of it is, is yes, I came in, I got ready to work. That's where we were. And all the things that he didn't have to do. And what well, my other ring camera? Thing, ring. It should have been delivered. You, it, you, have you checked? I checked. It wasn't out there. It all was right. earlier. Anyway, I'll, I'll check. Okay. So anyway, listen. Mind you, he doing shit that brothers don't got to do. He then actually came out of pocket, then bought me some shit, then did this, then did that. Ain't asked no questions. Just handled brother duties. I we went at the we was at the where the U-Haul today and the, the U-Haul girl so I'm saying you want brother she like hell no you can keep that uh I got five of them I don't want none and mind you he handing out his credit card he didn't have to do that but he taking care of his sister because the sister traumatized in life out here and helping me clean up my mess because I take responsibility for bring because he didn't want he told me not to do that. Mm -hmm. Mind you, he helping me clean it up even after I touched the stove. Now, and I ain't even got no stove. We ain't got, <laughs> we ain't got no stove. <laughs> we ain't got no stove. She lying, y'all. She ain't touched no stove. We ain't got no stove. Stove missing. Stove but but missing. we took that to the dump today, too, as we well. Because, we you know what I'm saying? It worked until it didn't work. It worked until it didn't work. And mind you, it was half ass working. It was good enough. I put breakfast on it, mom. I did put some sauce, some sauce, some turkey sauce, and some eggs on it, mom. Mind y'all, if y'all seen my kitchen, that was a three, four thousand dollar stove. Trash. That's trash. In 2016, 2017. That's why I was making that point. As the it my shit was expensive. Trash. And it's trash. But we all know expensive ain't better. I told Samsung you got on my nerves. In the 299 stove. I, I got another. You got another Samsung. <laughs> it was the only one that matched. Yeah. But literally, y'all. So okay, we, we back to the I love full you circle. Question. So I told her, you know, the, the point of it was is about the I love you is that, you know, you know, it's, it's crazy how we accept that people say that they love us, right? And these people don't even don't even know how to love, right? And, and mostly don't even love themselves. They don't even know how to love, right? And we find that out later. Um, once we deal with the bullshit, but the question was, was how, how, why is it that we easily accept people saying, Hey, we love you. Right. And we take that and we, we, for those of us who are, are trustworthy in ourselves and we actually love hard, we, we, we lean on that word. So when someone says it to us, we buy into it. Right. And then we find out later on that, you know, these people don't even know how to love, right. Haven't been loved and, and can't love you. Right. That was the question. So uh, while we were riding, I'm asking, I said, hey, yo, why is this? And then boom. So it took me a, a hot second. I had to think about it, right? Because I'm a person that knows how to love. I'm a person that knows how to love so much that they get on me. They tell me, don't do certain things because people take advantage of that, right? So then I'm thinking. And then I, I now I start talking because here we go again. So I told my brother, I'm like, if I had to really think about it, I'd have been married three times. Ain't none of them niggas love me. I love them. 
And the minute I took my love back, that's the reason why they still act the way they act. That's the reason why they still act like I traumatized them. And so that's the thing where I had to go back to the first one. And I'm saying, even when stuff happened with my daughter, he'll say, you act just like your mom. But then I went to my brother and I told him, I said, but that nigga abused me. Physically abused me, mentally abused me. Mind you, we ain't gonna, you know, bring up no old bones or nothing. But just so we clear, these people are all five and six years older than me. What I didn't tell you is that I remember when we was out walk woods and y'all was getting into it outside in the snow and I had to put my hands on that man outside and at walk woods. You remember that? Well, I that, is that when he banged my head on a damn metal thing? I don't know. I just see y'all outside going crazy. And it, it, it didn't feel right with me. No, but no, I actually do love them. I love them all still. I'm fucking K. Michelle out this bitch. Like, do you think you love them? You love, but I love them all. I love every single one of them, even still to this day. But that's the reason why. Because I know how to love property, properly. Love is unconditional. So I love you, but you can't be here. I'm going to love you from over there. Or you go there, I go here. So the difference between them and me is my love was not conditional with them and on top of them and on top of that, the reason why they all get mad at me is because I take my love and I go elsewhere with it. I'm not going to just let you abuse or continue to abuse my love. And at 15 um, or 14, 15, you did stuff to me that if I had told my mom or my dad that, they'd have fucked you up. But then we go into this because this is what I started telling my brother. I'm like, and what the fuck was wrong with me? What is so wrong with me that I keep protecting these people? Because I protected the first one from burning my arm, my arm, my arm with the iron, um, blacking my eye, um, banging my head, putting his hands on me. When okay, I, I ain't gonna lie, I didn't put my hands on a couple of people, but again, these people older than me and they should know better. Lead by example. Um, and I was 14, 15, 16 years old. Um, the next one, a womanizer still doing all the same exact, like, you know what I'm saying? Weird shit. But each one of them to this day still got an issue. Like, you know, I don't have no issue with nobody. Well, now you have ties to them. Yes. I have kids with them. You love their potential. You love their potential who you created them to be in your head. No, they they had no potential. They still ain't got no damn potential. Like I mean, honestly, really, even at, then, at like 14, 15, 16, you ain't really looking at potential. That's not yeah. really something that you can you can correlate to. Yeah, so future. none of that was like Reggie, why you ain't on the thing yet? I'm getting up here. Why are you not on the thing yet? You said he's talking about you gonna talk your shit. We can already get we got more shit that we can already talk about, okay? So anyway, so now we're speeding up because we're still going to today because there's still we still ain't got to the, the whole problem yet. All right. Or the whole issue or the, the, the nitty gritty. So we started talking about that. And then what else we were talking about? Because I, I just went into a whole bunch of other extra shit because we started talking about um, like relationships. And um, I guess, honestly, when you when you finally realize like you love different than other people. Now, what do you do? Like, what's the next step? If I know that I know how to love properly, and a lot of people, what's that say? Go back mm, to things need to be replaced about the, the Boots are, Oh, things need to be replaced, like energy. Oh, that was Larisha said that. Um, and how they love you, and they don't love themselves. That, that's what he was saying, Larisha. Lexus is saying love is, universe, love is a universal language, but it's hella foreign to a lot mm -hmm. of people. Hello. Um, or better yet, they don't even know what it is. Um, we're here to love and that's right. Well, that's the thing. And this would even, it goes back to children. Okay. Cause that's where we ended up going back to, too. If tell Reggie, go to the damn, the uh, come in here so we can talk to him properly. Reggie, go to click, click the link and come into the meeting. Um, when he said they don't know how to love because they parents not hugging them. No good night, love y'all, Rick, little Rick and Fred. <laughs> Bye, Reggie. Hey, Shay. So, if your parents not loving you or you don't have a dad, how do men learn how to be Rick, men? R.P. Fred, man. 
Who them? Greg Tolson and, um, and Rick Tolson. Oh, I thought he was saying that to me and you. No, tell, no, no. Tell Reggie. I don't. Well, okay, it's good. Good. Okay, Reggie, bye. Um, how do men learn how to be men if they don't have men around? I mean, can you really be a grown man if you don't have a dad around? Or do you just learn by example? Learn, learn. I mean, no, there ain't no example. Or do you just, is it, how do you learn? For me, I mean, I had, like I said, my uncle was my male figure in my life. Not to say, you know, what, what he did was, you know, uh, uh, was right. I mean, I don't think, I think a lot of the thing, the ways he was, um, made me into not a good person you know what i mean um i love my uncle he did teach me a lot of good qualities hustle um grind grit uh how to you know navigate these cold worlds um but it also made me into one of those uh you know womanizers that we're talking about you know what i mean because it was a constant cycle of what i was seeing um it took me a long while to to be able to you know understand you know and and be able to say hey this is where this this is pinpointed from how do i get out of that and it's hard to um it's hard to change those behaviors if that's what you're used to for so long you know what i mean um yes we all have the right yes we all have the choice to to make it to make our own choice and and do what we we know is right or wrong but trust me um a lot of a lot of learned behavior traits are hard to uh are, are hard to break so um how to be a man um i think my daughter i uh, had my daughter was one of the one of the the, the decide the pushing factors for me to to transition into that although it took me still a while you know to finally realize what being a man was and you know being a man is not just being able to to take care of, of things for me you know it, it i think communication honesty like working on the things that that you're not strong at for me uh is what makes you you know be a man you know what i mean you have to be able to grow and work on the things that you're not strong at you know i can be a strong communicator i can be but if i'm a shitty person i don't look at myself as as being a man if i can't uh communicate with my daughter if i can't provide her the necessary tools to go in her toolbox to make her an amazing woman, an amazing professional, and push her through this world without me, because you know that's these are the things that I, I focus on internally for myself to make me to make me better and to make sure my children, you know, have those tools in the toolbox to be able to navigate this world without me. That's that's just me. Um, Joshua said, yeah. "Talk to God about it." Lexi said, "Naturally, it's child's instinct to idolize an adult. If there's no parent, then someone that's consistent in their environment." And Melba says, appreciate your honesty and accountability. Kisa said, well said. Okay, so y'all, we still at this morning, this, this thing, right? So going back and trying to just figure out why certain things happen, because although we jumping in between different things, it is now we have the person saying, going you going back to the past, you know, you'll get a hundred hundred K if you wasn't living in the past. So then I'm sitting here and I'm still thinking about this shit and I'm like, why do people keep trying to tell you how to figure out or navigate your life? But then it dawned on me also. Right now, I'm living in the present because I'm accountable for my stuff and the things that people don't see is that we got videos that need to go up, but I haven't placed them up. So we've been around here doing all different types of stuff. So today we went and got rid of a whole bunch of crap that was supposed to be meant to, you know, establish something or do something with. But because I'm just getting rid of stuff and cleaning up the whole entire thing and starting over. And now I got a different plan um, because the way it was supposed to be done, I was doing it that way with the person. Um, but, you know, sometimes we be rowing and a person be poking holes. That's a real actual thing. Joshua, hey, you there? Um, I don't see your camera though, but it looked like you came in. Um, you be rowing and a person be poking holes because these people will say that they dare for you. They care about you. They love you. They want to, you know, see you win. But meanwhile, they really don't want to see you win. They just dare because this person inserted themselves into my happiness and I let them. 
and instantaneously I became so not happy at the same time because literally the person the day after we got married started doing weird shit that ain't that was not on the I'm trying to be you know keep you happy so fast forward to now and then it made me think this morning well after the fact I was sitting there and I'm thinking so is the person really saying, and y'all can kind of help me with this, and hopefully the person shows up and they kind of figure out, let me know. But in my mind, I was thinking, is a person trying to tell me to forget what happened to me and let it ride and then move from here to then? What, you talking about the 100K? I'm like, I was talking about the whole, like, cause I, I, they won't even let me get 10 K on this bitch. So a hundred K like, but why would a person say if they knew what I was doing and they know that basically what I'm doing now, cause they don't know what I'm doing. So that's the, probably, that's what made it made me think, but then it made me think a little bit deeper. Like maybe the person saying you'll never be the same. Like you are different. You're different now. So don't worry about that. Just go forward. Because remember I said, I don't know how to, like, as me, as who I am now, because I'm not what I was, I'm totally different. So that old person ain't there no more. It's a whole brand new woman there. And so it made me think, because I wanted to go take a shower and, you know, all that other good stuff before I got in here. And I had to go think, and I'm sitting there like, because I am different. So that means that, that would also mean that, who I am now, I haven't begun or started to live yet. So it just made me wonder, like, and I don't know why certain things are like literally holding weight in my brain right now. Because on one note, I was Alicia, saying, yes. Oh, you they say at? life don't start until you're 40. Well, I'm definitely 40. <laughs> I'm definitely 40. Where you at, Joshua? I can't even see your camera. I thought you was like going somewhere. Nah, I'm out here. I'm out here. I okay, just, how uh, was was utilizing the, the feature to take your video off. Oh, okay, okay. From time so to time I don't do stuff. I, I was saying from time to time, I don't disable my camera. Okay, well, that's fine. I just wanted, I didn't know if you was there or not, so I'm glad to know that you're there. <clears throat> nah, I'm here. That's your brother right there? Yes, this is my brother here. Peace, love, salute. Santa. Shit, making it happen. <laughs> or, I would say maintaining, but maintaining is is yesteryear. You know, we don't maintain no more. We making it happen. Thanks. Thanks. Word up. It's a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. Pleasure, my brother. <laughs> How was your day today? It was all right, Talisha. Um, I got two hoodies done. Um, shoot, I finished up two pieces in like three days. So that was nice. You know, it was like setting a new personal record for myself. Okay. Um, I was I was super glad that I got them done because, you know, of course, as you're working on something and you're building something, once you build it from scratch and it's done, it's like, ah, like, you know, Frankenstein almost. You're like, it's alive. So I'm excited about that. Um, I put those on the Instagram if anybody uh, was wondering what those look like. Um, I could give y'all a, a little peek if y'all was able to see on here later on please, as well. Please, that's what I was going to say. Please, I would love that. All right. Um, but other than that, yo, I'm just enjoying my space, you know, in these little walls. I'm listening to my music. You know what I mean? Just got to keep the, the up and up. That's that's the hugest thing. Um, you know, my, my grandparents tell me sometimes trouble don't set like rain. So with that being said, it's like I really feel, and if, and a lot of people will probably see this too. If you tap into the most happiest parts inside of you, you can make the the drudgiest rain cloud like disperse, and the sun will just shine on you. Like I think this is something that the Egyptians knew, 
and um, even with the pyramids, because the pyramids were almost like glass casing on the outside. So if you walk past the pyramids, it would almost, you would think it would be a blinding light. But I think it's that rate, uh, that, that radiance and that, that intensity, that brilliancy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you might be able to calibrate your eye to a higher frequency than the sun. It might be too much. It might go over people who had the scientifics and like the comedics behind it. But um, it's having to really do with yourself and how you affect the whole world. So um, I was, in a nutshell, what I'm attempting to say was I was happy. So I know the sun was shining outside. And you know what I mean? That was, that's the illness, man. Hey, Lexi. Don't mind me getting Hi. So how do you Big find Lex in the house. <laughs> <laughs> So how do you find your happy place? Like both of y'all can answer, like, like how do you tap in and find your happy place? Because that's the next thing. Like, I don't know what's going to make me happy because I'm different now. Nah, Talisha, you're not different. Why do you think you're different? I'm totally different. You're not different, different at all. My brother can tell you, he's sitting right here. He didn't know me my whole life. I'm totally different than I've ever been. Like I, last night, I just told him, I might even be too weird for me. <laughs> I literally just nah, you. you gotta I, embrace that. Ultimately, ultimately, you have to embrace that because when you stand on who you are, can nobody shake that. And then once you got that rigidity in your soul and your spirit and everything like combined like that, you can't be moved. You know what I'm saying? And can't no and ain't nobody gonna wanna try to shake you either. Because once you got that power of God in you and all lined up, shit. Can I think about two you. different things, like, cause I ain't, I don't think really too many people trying to play with me. But right now, I feel like, um, e okay. So for instance, even with my kids. So tonight, I was talking to RJ, and I was saying something to him. I told him, um, it's a lot of stuff happening and a lot of stuff going on. And normally, I tend to not say nothing. I just watch, you know, what's happening. But today, I basically brought some stuff to the forefront, and I'm saying. I need for everybody to realize I'm paying attention. You pay attention. Stop trying to play in my face. And so I feel like, um, well, you talking about the, the, the stove guy at the store. No, no, no. I would have, I would have worked them out too. <laughs> no, I'm talking about because I feel like, okay. So going back to what I was talking to my, my brother about, I covered up a lot of things and, he it's a thing where we'd be laughing because he'd be saying you'd be snitching like you and i said no i'm just basically tell, telling so it, it was funny but in all actuality now that i'm realizing that the reason why i'm saying so much is because i covered up so much for people i'm not doing it anymore even when it oh, came that to part. Abuse at a young age i covered it up because i could have just went and told my mom and dad but meanwhile i got a mom and dad that my mom definitely then told a couple dudes in the middle of the street like you got like fucked up my mom ain't really one to play with and so my attitude like when people say i have a big uh energy or or, or i basically come off as no nonsense it come from my mom because my mom ain't like you're not gonna play in her face she she gonna check you like real real quick i was in the store one time with my mom and a lady was just looking at me and my mom moves the cart to the side and she like, why are you looking at her like that? Mind you, I think the lady was just looking at me, but my mom is one of them people who like, you just not going to play in her face. So I don't know if I was protecting the people or like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Man, you was up there keeping it a hundred like your, your family lineage did a hundred years back. Ain't nobody gonna shake no harm around here, right? <laughs> I mean, that's that's, nah, a fact. that's just it, though. You know what I mean? It's your it's your loyalty, it's your DNA code, it's your genetics, it's your you know what I mean? It's your understanding think, of how the dynamics work was in society. In context, I think the you ain't going to play yourself. Oh, uh, the whole con. I think the context is was. The summer young abuse. I think you can. You, without assuming, I think you can at least put something together to where 
her not saying certain things to, about uh, these situations, I don't think it's a matter of being sturdy or being anything of that. It's 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 something that's looked at. It's it's, it's not a good thing. It's not. It's not a good thing. Hardships. So, Lexi got something she want to say. So Lex. All right. So let me ask you this: When you think of your family, and and it comes to a reaction versus a response, would you consider your family a hornet's nest? Motherfucking right. And and because and he when, he just said. He said something about loyalty, and I, 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 that's one of the things, but I need to be loyal to myself. So, so go ahead, Lexi. I feel like maybe you didn't tell your family because you knew the reaction that they would have versus helping you find a way to actually respond to it effectively because then, then that would, that would put them in a position to make a decision for you by completely taking someone out of your life, at, you know, if that were the option that would or the possibility that would happen but as a child sometimes when you say something i feel like and it doesn't get heard or it gets played out like it wasn't like that like that's a different form of like that's the type of rejection that can really like stifle someone's voice to be able to speak out on the abuses that they go through because they don't they don't want to put their problems with other people because they in a way you you probably felt not you but like in a situation like that like i would feel like maybe it was my fault because i put myself in that position and it could have been protecting everybody too because literally what if i didn't want my mom to get in trouble or like you know what i'm saying so it could have been protecting everybody at the same time either way i don't think it was the right decision like i should have made better decisions and at that age, it's almost like, could you have really made better decisions? I mean, we, you got to look at the times, too. I mean. Oh, yeah. So now let's go back to that. So listen to this. And this is another thing. And y'all can tell me how y'all feel about this. So I was making a joke. It wasn't a joke worthy, but it was a joke because it was like 15, 1502, right? So we talking about the uh, situations that's happening in the world today where it's a lot of old stuff being brought up and now people getting ready to get convicted and going to jail for that, right? But in 1515, it was okay. And not that this is okay, period. But we talking about DNA and we talking about learned behavior, okay? So if it was okay for you to give your child away or you know for a, a donkey or this or that or you to marry off kids because y'all married keeping the lineage together and this that and a third it was okay until it wasn't okay these are things that keeps being okay till it wasn't okay but we don't realize our dna is a, a code it holds these things in trauma can be transferred over generations and regardless of whether or not it was made to be or thought of as a trauma back then it wasn't thought of as a trauma it was thought of as um bringing nations and kingdoms together you see what i'm saying you you marrying a fucking nine-year-old girl off to a 62 year old man because it's bringing kingdoms and and things of that nature together not realizing we literally are transferring trauma and so now how do you because somebody in here talking about you're not wired you're evolving but some people maybe up until now of the evolving were wired that's in their system so how do you break a generational curse when you don't even realize it go ahead joshua this it what you're saying, Talisha, is making me think uh really hard about you know uh the structure of Egypt and the pyramids, you know, the pyramids more or less. This structure is so dynamic, right? If you understand anything about those and the um the emerald tablets and stuff, one big thing that people really must understand that principle of the micro and the macro and you know as in without you know everybody be saying but more or less i think if you understand the micro or the macro you 
be able to look at the big thing and how it affects you on the small scale. And even if you look at the small thing, you'll see how it affects on a big scale. And that's one big thing of physics because that's actual, you know what I mean, physical science, you see? But it's just that. So if we was to look at it right now in retrospect, retrospect and say, okay, what can we do to the future to say, to, you know, per se, we don't make the same mistakes. I think it's just not to keep writing them. Yeah, but how do you how do you not write something that's already written? It's already in your DNA. It's already in it, your DNA. It is, but if we still pushing everybody to say, okay, don't be the worst you, be the best you, or be that hero that you never had in your life, you know, do everything that scares you. You know, and those things, because some things you don't learn until you experience it, and some things you can't learn unless you have experience. Go ahead, Lexus, you got the mic. All I was going to say was the song Unwritten by, like, Natasha Bedingfield or something just popped in my head. And it's, like, staring at the blank page before you open up the dirty window. And then, like, let the sun illuminate your skin and... I forgot the rest of the words, but it says because at the end of the chorus, the rest is still unwritten. So maybe, you know, that's a like whatever's written in your DNA code, there's still all these blank pages afterwards. So, I mean, you can code into something like the thing with, I, I don't understand anything about coding. So, actually, never mind on he, what I was hear, about to hear. say. <laughs> huh? I said he here, so go with it. Okay. <laughs> so, like, um, when when something is like made into an equation or a problem or whatever there's always there's always a way to to recode it afterwards to fix that that problem whether it's whether it's all the way at the beginning of a problem or in the middle like in the middle of the equation whatever it is i don't know what i'm talking about but this is what's going on in my head right now so no but you do know what you're talking about actually because this is what i i got i gather from that um to me it's like when because we got one of these grandmothers too. Well, we have one of these grandmothers. Talking about it can rewrite it. But if you want to keep covering it up, we can't rewrite something that you want to, like it, it keeps being a cycle. And so like, and this is funny, but it's not funny. We were, um, me and my uncle was doing the ancestry DNA. So we were trying to trace back the lineage and the heritage of the family, right? And so my grandmother, which is my mom's mom, it's something a little bit squeaky in that family, but we don't know what it was. But we had a grandmom that was alive at the time. So we went to ask her. You know what she said? Mm -hmm. Why y'all bringing up the past? And she don't want to talk about that. Why would the he person... probably had pets. I don't know what that guy yeah, what? did. Anything, but just... <laughs> she said, you said she probably thought... had what? They probably had pets. Oh, <laughs> what that got to do with it? They did have pets, lots of them. Roaches. But <laughs> guess what? Now we only can leave it up to assumptions. And you want to know what my assumption is? But this lady could have fixed that. But you know what? Want to know what my assumption is? What it looked like to me? She is that her daddy? Like no, that her daddy. Is her grandpa and her daddy. Now figure that shit out. That's what it looked like to me. But she could have fixed it. But she didn't want to fix it. So why would she not tell us? That sounds pretty deep. And the only reason why she's not going to tell us something is why. Why would somebody not want to tell us something? Why are you bringing out the pay? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's, uh, what I you mean, sipping it's a out? Mess, it's a but that would be no good if we read the code, though, right? Yeah, it would. If we knew the code, we don't know the code. But we also know, and, and, and we're going to just pinpoint it, black households, a lot of secrets that we're not supposed to talk about. 
And the minute the minute they even start looking like they even conversation worthy, we get shut down and, and, and tell us kids staying in the kids place, right? We we see this shit as children because the shit is more prevalent to us and we're more innate to be able to see it as children. You know, as we get older, we start to lose these these conscious thoughts and it's not it's only certain things that start to trigger us, right? But to her point is where you have that that knowledge right there in front of you, which is no longer here. So now uh, it, it's now it's for only for us to assume and it's going to be whatever we want it to be. So when it's unwritten, we're going to rewrite it. And it may not even be what it is. But guess what? Today is what it's going to be. <laughs> it might not be that. You could have cleared it up a long time ago over some Chinese food. But no, now look at us. Now yeah. we got to assume. But the way it is showing up in ancestry, it ain't looking right. The math ain't mathing. I think what we're talking about here tonight, I mean, I, if we want to start pod, and this is all about trauma. Um, and we've been we've been kind of teeter tottering with it, uh, personal trauma, family trauma. Um, it's basically generational trauma. Actually, um, can you see Larisha? And, yeah, I see Larisha okay. over there. How you doing, Larisha? Don't worry about it. So, um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I, you know, you know, it's crazy, and, and I'm gonna be hundred percent honest with you. I think we sit and we talk, right, on on this on on this app, and we don't dive deep enough, and we don't like we've had our vulnerable moments, right? Um, but there are some things that if we're gonna pod, let's pod. You know what I mean? We all got got our our, our traumas. We all got our our. Whatever it is that triggers, and maybe we don't, but you know, if it's something relatable, um, I think ultimately, I think for me, I don't know. I kind of joined Ladies Night late. Um, so did I. <laughs> but even not not tonight. I'm just saying in general. I just feel like you know this has been a platform uh, for men and women to be able to discuss certain things to help them uh, along their journey, whatever that may be, right? But I do find us at times sugarcoating shit and not really talking about what we what we as adults and those who are tuned in, um, you know, need to address to 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 bring the context that we're that we're tiptoeing around. Well, know? I was I was I wasn't tiptoeing. I've been trying to say. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I'm trying to stick my toe in right now. I'm saying what I'm saying is in general and moving forward is what is, is the point I'm trying to. Make. Yes, we trying to move forward. Okay. You know what I mean? So now this is the thing. The thing that I love about us, because now I'm changing the code, right? I was watching my brother with his daughter yesterday, and I'm the same way with my kids. We talk to them about anything. They can come to us and talk to us about anything. But then I got another question. Do you think they really are talking to, to us about, you know, could they come and talk to us about a lot of stuff? But could there be things that. I'll be honest with you. Um, I feel like the things that my daughter comes and speak to me about are um, they're different from what she speaks to her mother about. Okay. She'll come to me and speak to me about. Uh, totally. Uh, and I know that's totally different. I'll be like, well, so what did your mother say? Well, I haven't, I haven't really. I haven't told her or I haven't spoken to her about it. Because you can talk to your dad about you to, stuff. I want you to fix it. <laughs> you know, basically that's what it is. I want you to fix it, Dad. Please fix it for me. Like before mom catches winds of it, fix it. You know. <laughs> and that's what I do. I fix it. You know what I mean? And if it's something that's out of my wheelhouse and it's something that I need to bring to the attention, trust me, I'm going to call mom to say, Hey, look, we got an issue, Easton. Like, <laughs> like this is deeper than what it is because we can't hide it. Like, I can't hide these things because they're going to, they're going to come back up, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, Oh, your dad knew, Oh, your mom knew. And at that point in time is when the fucking issue starts. Right. Cause now the parents is beefing because the parents is beefing and it looks like you're part of this problem. Oh, you knew, or oh, you agreed or you, you know what I mean? No, that's not what it is. So, uh, uh, we have to have that open relationship with our kids and whether or not they're telling, um, for me, that whether or not my daughter's telling me everything, for me as irrelevant, the fact that she didn't feel comfortable to even tell me anything because I didn't have that same courage to go tell my mom anything. Right. You know what I mean? And I think that's because we had a healthy fear of parents. But I think also that was a good thing, too. Yeah. 
Because we're talking yeah. about stuff right now that we didn't realize that our mom actually kind of helped us looking at other people that are our age that should have got their heads smacked off. And it wasn't until one situation happened to me where I had to tell my mom because she had a car and she had to take me to fix it. <laughs> is when I felt comfortable enough to tell her. After that, I was like, fuck it. This is the worst that could happen. Mom will just tell her anything. Hey, mom. So a lot of the things, and then it's funny because we're going back full circle, but that stuff kind of was relevant to me right now. And again, what made me wonder is why do people think that if you bring up something or if you're discussing something, maybe because to me, I'm trying to unpack it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and put it in its perspective shelf of where it needs to go. Okay, I can tuck this away because finally I addressed it. But to other people, they're saying, okay, well, and again, I don't know what that person, what they were trying to say or why they was trying to say or why they felt comfortable enough to even think that they knew. But why do people feel like you shouldn't address shit that happened. Like you keep bringing that up. Why well, ain't done processing it yet? Why do I have to process it the way you want me to process it? Why well, can't process it the way I need to process? You talking about 100K? Yes. I got an answer for you. I've been okay. actually, I've been actually thinking about this. Okay, go right? with it. And this is what makes sense to me, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And and anybody, please jump in. So to add context, right? Uh, what what was the for those who don't know what was the hundred k conversation? The lady said it wasn't a conversation. She just came out of nowhere. Oh, what was the oh, oh was what made? she said um was the reason why you don't no you're stuck in the past. That's the reason why you don't have a hundred k yet. But they didn't. It was kind of like maybe worded different. But they were saying acknowledging the fact that if I would if I would move on or move forward, I would my channel would grow faster. So this is what I this is what this is what I. I correlated to wish to say. I said, damn, what could that what could that potentially mean? And it's gonna be a little comment in this, but in the same respect, please take it. It's a joke in the, it's a joke in every truth. I really looked at it as for her, right? She stuck on chapter one of your story, mm -hmm. right? And there may be 900, there may be a a, a 99,000 people who are also stuck on this on this on this chapter of your story. Mm -hmm. They want to hear what the fucking next thing is going on, right? Mm -hmm. So where if you continuously keep saying, "Hey, I got a horse. I rode the horse. I fed the horse. The horse went to sleep. I got a horse. I rode the horse. I fed the horse. The horse rode to sleep." When you first get the horse, right? You're going to have 50,000 people intrigued about this horse right yeah. now you rode the horse they're like oh shit where'd you learn how to ride a fucking horse you know mm -hmm. you fed the horse where'd you get the horse feed the horse sure does eat a lot who the fuck the horse sleeps standing up can you knock it <laughs> over you ride the horse again the next day now you only got thirty thousand people every day you do the same shit you're losing that con that, that you're losing that group of people right Mm -hmm. We want to hear. We want to hear you go jump a ramp with the horse because we know the horse can jump, right? The minute you jump that ramp, I think she's saying, "Hey, you're up at 100k because those we're still tuned in. Those people are still tuned in, but they're looking for the next thing, right?" They're self. That now, mind you, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking because right now your face is triggered. But what I'm saying is, listen, <laughs> these people. Don't let their nosiness move you from where you want to be, right? Because it's sooner or later, whenever you, whether you do or don't feel like telling if the horse can jump, that's up to you. That's when you feel comfortable with it. You know what I'm saying? And if you're going to stick around to hear even parts of this story, just be thankful enough that I'm even telling you anything, right? But don't let your nosiness, you know, try to force me into providing you something that doesn't benefit me or I'm willing and willing to give you. You may not be you may not be part of that story. You know what I mean? You may be the 30,000 that may need to go sit over here and every seven seventy seventy thousand that have been rocking with me up to this point. They may be ready to hear, hey, um, uh, I used to suck on mufflers for a living. They've been talking. I'm gonna tell you, she used to suck on mufflers. I mean, hey, I'm so what is this? This is the part that I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> 
We all got the same face looking look, look like, like, like What the fuck? Well, was it unlighted or was it diesel? Now, I need to know. Listen to this because this is the thing. I'm fighting for my life out here. Like, like people just don't know that. Like, literally, I'm still in the same phase. The, the book ain't changed yet. Like, literally, I got a whole new book for a whole new chapter. It ain't changed. And I'm tired. You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm most mostly afraid of? That I literally am right here. I'm so tired right now. Like, I could be literally right here. But I'm tired. I was asleep. Ladies and I start at 9.30. I was asleep. Get somebody else to do it. And then literally, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. I was woke at the time. When it was time. That's when I went to sleep. At the time. That's how tired I was because I went and took a shower. I was getting prepared. And I literally sat right there and went to sleep. Get somebody else to do it. And Wait. then God woke me up. Like literally I woke right up again. And I looked at the time. And it was 11.20. Gary be 11.30. And I looked at the time saying shit. Well, I'm two hours late. But shit. Ladies night. We be on, on the motherfucking thing sometimes till 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Fact. So I ain't late. Let me go and and, and that's how long y'all uh, be on here. Damn right. You right. Hell yeah. That's how long. So literally, God said, "You not like you late, but you not late." You right on time. It's, it's, you right yes, on it's time. like there's people like the thing that I heard was they're still counting on you. Outcome. Show up anyway. Just show up. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, mm, we we late. I checked with nothing. I went upstairs. I got up off that chair. I went upstairs, brushed my teeth, came and sat here. And then y'all saw what y'all saw. I was still preparing the shit as I was like, that was, I literally had just woke up. Because I heard God say, get up. It's still needed. That's why if you look at the thing, it said, what does it say on the um thing? Um, The show must go on. The show still got to go on. So here we are. But mind you, my day played out to where we started. I started at six o'clock in the morning. And mind you, he'd been up the whole entire time. Like I went, he wasn't the, the, from the beginning. I don't know what he was doing up, up there, but by 7 30, we were supposed to be at the U-Haul place. And in my mind, I'm saying, pretty soon nobody's gonna be here but me. I'm gonna be here all by myself. I'm leaving tomorrow at four o'clock in the a.m. Four o'clock in the a.m. today. I'm here. See what time it is. I got a nine-hour drive, people. Eleven forty-four right now for me. And mind you, he's been doing like he's been well, doing he's stuff for everybody since he got here. For me, his daughter, for everybody since he got here. Don't be rubbing your ass in that, bro. Let me ask you a question, uh, Lex, Larish. Why do you guys show up to ladies' night? To motivate the crowd because I enjoy it, makes me happy. Makes me happy too. Sir, why do you show up the ladies' night? Who that me? Me and you, sir. Not I mean, myself. I mean, no, nah, Ivy. Nah, Tali should throw me the um, shoot me the email, so I just jump in. I ain't doing with my time. Jump right in and see what's going on. Well, I appreciate so, y'all. Let me show you why I show up the ladies' night. Word, word, word. Please provide. Yeah. It's, deeper, it's deeper than that, right? Like, I've heard some great stories during this segment, right? Um, and I appreciate everything you, you guys offer in, in conversation. And I think a lot of the stuff that has been said on here, for me, is relatable. And it helps me... Um, it helps me cope with certain things, right? Um, I'm a recluse. I'm my own body. I'm in the fucking house by myself. Uh, I don't really get out, um, to be honest with you. I interact with who I want to interact with because I'm not, uh, I don't trust a lot of motherfuckers, right? And I stand on that and I keep people in a box, right? And um, so showing up here and hearing some of these great stories, Lexi, Palm, uh, 
Josh, I've heard some of your your very biblical and, and analytical thoughts on uh, uh, the Egyptians and 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 uh, tombs and things of that nature. Larisha, you're you're just the realness of you and just just you being able to you know pop in and out the conversation and, and not pay attention like you are now, but you know just still be paying attention. You know, always behooves me. <laughs> There's a, there's, there's a diverse there's a diverse crowd that we have and we all have something to offer one another and that's the reason why i show up right because i feel like i'm at a point now that if you don't have if you don't have any value in my life i don't need you to fuck around and let's be clear so if you can't add value i can't benefit off of you you can't benefit off, off of me I, whether it be just even a conversation or me learning from you, I don't need you around, right? And you guys all have different perspectives. You all have different walks of life. And it's good to hear because, you know, some of the things you guys speak about actually help me move forward or learn or push me in a direction that, hey, I need to tighten up on certain things. You know what I mean? So that's why I show up. You know, I don't just show up because I got the email. He has, he just said, I enjoy the company and honesty, and you can make <laughs> Thank you. space. Oh, like it, Kisa. Well, you're welcome. Um, and I show up because wow. honestly, I'm showing up for me, I'm showing up for y'all, and I'm showing up because I'm being told to. Because again, I got told to, like, I woke up and the show still got to go on. You, you are still needed, um, it's still necessary. And honestly, like, I love y'all. I love y'all because y'all don't have to show up, but y'all are consistent. And so I want to be consistent with y'all as well. And that's like when those are the people that you should be loyal to. You know what I mean? Because like what Lexi said, I like being here. And actually, like, again, I got dressed. I got dressed. And then it was just like I was my body was so exhausted. It just shut down on me. Like, you got to go to sleep. But even in that process, I just needed a nap. You know, sometimes you need a nap before you go to club, and it just was like the befitting <laughs> of the I same thing. I had taken that before I went to the club. Yeah, oh, uh, hey, say what you will. But at the end of the day, it was all all these things kind of are playing out. And like I said, it goes full circle to a couple of different things. It may seem like I touched on several different things, but they all were relevant as to what's been going on and so now i'm in the cleanup phase and that might be the thing that people don't see and my brother used to tell me all the time even when things was great and i was just so happy like you make things look so easy like you don't let people see the work that gets done behind the scenes because even when i was in trucking what people didn't know was i would be sometimes flagging for my own company like taking the 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 big stuff and following behind the truck like nobody knew that all they would see was by the time we got to california by the time we got to arizona and we having a good time they didn't see the work that got put into me being able to go over there and do that and to me it was almost like i don't know why i didn't show that part but there's real life that's happening behind the scenes so i'm not just over here sitting on my ass collecting or doing you know doing certain things and there there's stuff that really happens behind that i made a lot of money but it wasn't because i was just out here with my hand out i literally did the work to make a lot of money you don't work you don't eat and right now i feel like even still like with the whole youtube thing and all of that stuff like I put in so much work initially and that's what i'm saying like even on my platform it's making me tired because doing readings and all that stuff i love that but it almost feels like it takes a lot of energy and then youtube covering my stuff up like why do i gotta keep fighting against like lexi what you said the other day was for real why do i gotta keep fighting against youtube and yet they keep putting out stuff that they'll like, put your stuff out but they delay the playback like they won't like it, it'll just put a blank screen saying um it the video will start soon but it'll do it for like 30 minutes that's what i'm saying they, they're ridiculous. doing a lot of that stuff to my to my stuff and it almost makes me feel like but now i'm watching other people's channel 
like grow beyond. But again, God keep telling me, don't look at that. Just keep doing the work and it'll work itself out. But damn, like I keep trying. And it makes me feel like, okay, well, fuck it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's the thing. I may have gotten a little lax on it because it's like, okay, I got to do this. I got to do this. Why am I being made to do so much? Why do I got to keep going through that? Why do I got to keep doing that? Alicia, be patient. It's probably right. just getting to who it needs to go to. And that's it. Yeah. It don't need to go to a million people. If it go to a million people, then it might be a detriment. Maybe, but also what if it is a detriment to me right now and my livelihood? Because at the end of the day, I'm a person like, and again, I'm not complaining. It just does what it does. It does what it does. And I'm okay with that. But to me, it's almost like the amount of effort that I continue to put in when I'm tired. Like, that's the key word. I'm saying, I'm telling God, I'm telling y'all, I'm tired. I've been fighting against everything for a long time. This ain't just happening. Maybe it's important for you to take a break, like a me time. I don't get a break, though. That's the thing. Because I don't get a break. Take one, no, and no, that's the thing. It, that's the difference. Easy. You're not listening. You gotta listen. I can't. Some people get to take breaks. Some people don't. And as of now, you gotta listen. I'm fighting for my life right now. It's been a two-year, three-year process of me fighting for my life. I'm tired to the point that literally I'm falling asleep. Mind you, just imagine I was doing it in my truck and I was saying, God, I'm tired. But mind you, I'm on a road in a big tractor trailer, tired like that. To the tune of a couple of days I cried, y'all heard me say, like, I don't think that, I think that people hear me, but they don't understand. Like, it's been a lot. And I'm not a complaining ass bitch. I do what I got to do. But when I'm asking for relief, I'm asking for it because I need it. And so, again, my brother showed up. So I'm not complaining because my brother showed up. He did a lot of shit. He's been nonstop on the go between me, his daughter, and my, my sons. Like I said, he didn't have to do that. So I'm getting the relief. But also in the process of me getting the relief, I still got to, you know, still got to do stuff. You see what I'm saying? So it's almost like when um, I said about that bed, that that bed that I made, or like when a cake, when you need a cake that and bed, God give you all the stuff. That bed comfortable too, by the way. But I I couldn't get the bed done, like you know, in in time enough. Everything literally, I don't know what is happening in America because he just told y'all we went to Lowe's where they got a lot of stoves there, but ain't no stoves available. None. The bed gonna come, but the bed's gonna come after he was already here i'm not gonna let my brother sleep on the mattress on the floor and i didn't mind it i would i, I would have. Yeah, he, he would have i'm okay with that and he said that but i'm still not gonna do that i got wood in my backyard i got nails in my my utility room i got how much equipment i got in that motherfucker like i'm i keep some equipment because i like building stuff and quite frankly, it was kind of peaceful. Like if it wasn't just for the like hauling and stuff, which my son ended up doing that, but it was kind of peaceful. Because again, I'm building for my life. But also it helped me because in the end, it's like, I can see it changing because literally my yard looks different, right? I can see everything changing, but it take work. Like, I don't got a small yard. Like, it's small, but I don't got a small yard for a person. It's kind of, you know, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done out there. So, when I'm not doing something out there, I need to do something in the house. And when I'm doing something in the house, then I need to do something online. So, it's a, 
And when everything gets the way it needs to get, then that's then it'll be fine. But then that goes to what I said about people showing up. Like your own kids, because that's another reason why I was saying something about my kids. Um, we gotta learn how to tell people no. Because even your own kids will try to take advantage of situations and it puts extra stress on you. Because literally, like my garage, I I did the floor in the garage, I painted the walls. Um, and then I went out to work, came back, my shit was fucked up. Why? Because I had an 18 year old son. Talisha, Talisha. Yes. Yo, yo, my neighbor, he told me, all right, so my neighbor, he had like 10 heart attacks and like 11 strokes, right? God bless his spirit. His name is Jimmy. He said, uh, he said, he said, he said, after like his fifth or sixth stroke, he says, doctor said, he said, you got to move away from your family because your family is, by you worrying about your family is what's giving you the heart attacks. So you got to move away from your family. Well, people have to know that. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Yeah, but that you're not, that's the truth. But at the end of the day, I don't want to speak none of that into my life. But at the end of the day, I know that already. And that's what I said to my kids. Y'all always welcome, you, you know, come see me do all that. But at this point in time, I need space. I need space from people. If you're not here to help me or you're not, like, understanding the process, because everybody has a process. And we got to figure out what the process is. And I'm a person, I pick up energy. So I could be tired and it not even be my energy. It could be somebody else's energy. But right now, my energy is saying, that's nice, Lexi. Thank you. That's a table you made? Uh, it's actually a saw blade I spray painted and used acrylic on. It's hmm. for my, it's, I painted it for my stepdad for Christmas. That's amazing. That's really nice. Yeah, so it, 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 we got to know what we need, know what we need at the time. I'm a, yeah. I know what I need right now. I'm about to go to bed because I got to get up at 4 o'clock. But um, I had to show up and show out with y'all. Yeah, Hi, guys. Yo, definitely. Where you got to drive to, though? I'm going to Virginia. Y'all ain't got to leave. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, leave. I'm, 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 about, I'm about to go back. I'm going to be in a chat. You know what I mean? I'm going to be night out. But uh, I, just need to, I just need to rest my bones, man. My legs hurt. Yo, my legs. Yo what up? If you, if you can, see what's good with the land down there, the real estate in Virginia. Um. I was reading something, you know what I'm saying, regarding Virginia um, and a couple places like up in the Midwest, but it's something really, really enriching about Virginia, you know what I'm saying? And something about the ge geographical structure or something like that, but look into it though. That. Appreciate you, my boy. Yo, absolutely. Yo, blessings, safe travel. Yes, sir. But yeah, Joshua, that's actually important. Like we got to know when to back away. And that's what I was saying. Like, cause I ended up saying that. And then I said, and I'm not going to let nobody pizza say good night and safe travels, Donnie. Night, 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 night. We got to know when to back away and also know that we can't let people make us feel bad. No matter what position they play in our life when we need time. And it's okay to say that. And so that was one of the things. It was me saying, um, yeah, I, I need space away from certain situations or people's energy or because it's draining. And pick I love yourself it. out of the mode. Yes. And, and then that's the pick other your, thing. Pick yourself out of the mode. When you when you get in uh overworking, overachieving, or even overreaching, you know what I'm saying? Take a step back and say, hey, wait, let me just give it like five or 10 minutes. Honestly, that's probably the best way to do it. I've noticed that I have myself, I uh, have, you know, difficulties with that before, Talisha, and honestly, that's, that's what I had to do. Like, I've noticed like myself, like, you know, kind of like not really get it, like, you know, like like disoriented or anything it's just like okay let me drink some water 
I just finished the operation. Let me get a snack. But, you know, and it's just, it's just that. It's like you can't, like, work yourself. Like, if you give yourself three hours of one thing, that's good enough. Love you, Lexi. Love you guys. Later, Lex. Bye. Enjoy Bye. the weekend. I will. You too. And that's the thing. I like, will, some, thing, some things we have to realize, like, um, when you said take a step back, certain things, and when it's time, that you, you got to discern which things you are allowed to step back from. Because what if God is telling you, like, you have to do this, this thing, but what those other people are doing, you can't that's not the thing for you to do. So we can look at it and say that, okay, the whole, the whole thing is what's draining. The whole thing is what's making you tired. Um, oh, Donnie Melba said, love you, bro. Thanks for a good evening and morning. Hey, Mo. So it's basically like having some discernment in situations too, because um, if I was not meant to get up even for this right now, I would have stayed asleep. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because there's more people than just me that are actually are, you know, counting on me. You see what I'm saying? No, I understand exactly what you said, no, Talisha. Um, like, make certain things for certain things if that's the case. Uh, you know, Ivy, you know, you're a polymath, you know, you got plenty of uh, things going on. So if you could just break your, uh, like, say, for example, the amount of times you cook a week, boom, bust it down into three times out of seven. If it's like something that you, you know, when you come in on live, you know, be like, I, right, I'm going to do that in between uh, maybe eight and 11 in the morning and maybe four and seven at night or something you know you this might be a time where you have to utilize your planning abilities and planning skills and knowing exactly when is enough enough it happens like that and it's all sort of just part of developing a business mindset mindset and just having structure in order to, you know what I'm saying, make your business succeed. Don't worry about it. You're not like, like you, you're not freaking out for nothing. But don't freak out about it. You know what I mean? Because I it's nothing. Really it's nothing to really freak about. Freak out about it because at the end of the day, don't forget you're still going to get what God got for you. You know what I mean? It's just best off that you know what I'm saying. You don't run yourself in the ground attempting to get it because what good is it if you got it and then you can't enjoy it you know what i'm saying that i'm paying attention more attention to though is this i feel like i've done more and that's that's when i know well, that's, do less. no 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 i mean i know that there, that's when i know that there's something interrupting my energy that's what i'm getting at I'm here for you and for me. I enjoy talking and listening to the honesty and integrity of real genuine people. Thank you, Aaron. And, but see, this is where you have to know. See, this is what I'm saying. When I said, like, the Army thing, I do more by 6 a.m. than most people do all day. Like, that's a real thing. But if I know that the math ain't mathing on the things that I'm doing and the amount of stuff that's happening, that means that that's somebody else's energy invading. You see what I'm saying? We also have to remember that spiritually there's other stuff going on as well. And what we might not think is just black and white. There's a shade of gray in between there. And so I think knowing yourself is important. And I know myself. So I know that there's something else that's happening as well. It feels like there's a drain on my energy. It feels like there's a drain happening around me it feels like and and i don't have like that's what i'm saying so it would only necessarily have to be the people that are trying to circle around in my circumference and you gotta go so somewhere there's a dream happening and i gotta cut it loose so energetically there's a drain on my system what you say larisha I've learned that 
through this process with I, I can't know, hear you, Larisha. It's not like you far. I know. I've learned that in the process of the process that you're going through right now, you just find yourself doing everything repeatedly over and over and over and over. Okay. Um, the thing it is, is once you complete that process, you got to complete that process. You are repeating the process, actually the ending of the process. That's why you find yourself continually doing the same thing over and over again. You got to cut that. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Now, the other thing is, I realized is there is something lingering, like you just said, in your energy. It's somebody or something. It's not yes. always somebody. It's always something or somebody that is lingering. You, in you energy. know, you picking up what I'm putting down. Exactly. Um. Now. What I've learned, and I'm just speaking from what I've learned, it is things that is in your energy, which is in your home, which is what you repeat every 24 hours a day. It is something in your home that you need to get rid of. Which is why I'm cleaning and getting rid of every fucking thing. You're you picking up my shit. Regardless of how much it costs to replace. No one Get knows what it is, what you pay for it, unless you tell them. Because what you didn't set there and pay two hundred dollars for, it could look like you paid two thousand for. It. But it's up to you to dress it up and be creative with what it is that you want. Okay. Um. A lot of people. Another thing, don't acknowledge what they're going through. They just keep doing the same thing over and over. And, and that's over. what I am not going to do. But it drains the fuck out of you in the process. So that's the second thing you have to acknowledge. What the fuck is draining you? What is draining you is not for you. Because we are not here to be drained. We come with so much energy, okay, that we're not supposed to be drained, whether it's people, places, or things. Let it go. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, you spoke a mouthful. And Keisha said, I love what she just said. That resonates with my spirit. And Aaron said, I can relate to a lot of what you're saying because you picked up exactly what I'm saying. Like, that's why I said it's gonna go over a lot of people's heads. But at this point, like the thing that I'm dealing with is bigger than and and I and I'm tired. So that means that when I'm saying is. people, the shit gotta go, it, it gotta go. And I, I love the fact my brother came and he helped, like, like if y'all see the stuff that I threw away today that I just got rid of, like I literally got rid of so much stuff today. Like she said, it don't matter what it costs. I didn't care. Just put it on there and get it away from here. Because Something somehow, some way, and that's what I keep saying. Y'all got to pay attention. Spiritually, y'all got to pay attention to what happens around you. That ring camera was the, that was God's way of saying, draining, it literally drained the battery, two battery packs were in there. It wasn't one battery pack. I literally bought the extra battery to go in it. It was two batteries in that thing. And although it's been up there working for a year or maybe less, I don't know when I bought it, but at the point, at this point, with that, what God was trying to show me was the solar panel is supposed to charge it. The battery was fully charged when I stuck it in there. The solar pa panel is supposed to keep it charged somehow it drained to zero and it had to be put back to a consistent source of electricity a connection of flow in order for it to now be recharged and then i had to understand that i had to move the panel 
to a different location, which means I got to move myself to a different location away from people. So guess what? This is my location. The people got to go. This is my location. The shit got to go. So if you can't move yourself, you got to move the stuff. So that's why I said people keep saying stuff to me, but they don't realize like, like, what are you even talking about? Because even with the lady said, but then it, like I said, it kind of played in my brain because only certain things, because most of the time I just ignore your ass because I didn't really respond to the motherfucking email. Like, get somebody else to do it. Because at this point, I'm not even connecting. I'm not even going to connect my energy with that energy. You see what I'm saying? Because if I acknowledge or talk to you about it, but somehow it's still stuck with me enough for me to kind of be like, hold on. All right. And then it dawned on me, like I said, to me, it, it, it signifies something else. Because initially I said, why do people keep trying to tell me how I'm supposed to deal with something? I'm going to deal with it. Um, Aaron said, um, yes, Larisha, with a purple heart. She said, but I said, people keep trying to tell me how to deal with stuff or process stuff. I didn't ask you. Nothing that they didn't process, they said. And I never asked. Like, why do you keep, why do people feel like they keep wanting to insert themselves in my Ladies, shit? I'm running real quick. I'm sorry, Talisha, I'm running. Lavisha, I'm running. Peace. Don't run. <laughs> you don't have to run. Nah, I ain't trying to run, run, but you know what I'm saying? I'm yes, out here I on check, it. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, nah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. See ya. That's no, definitely me. my honor. Word. Well, you know I love you, but you thing. never send me your address because I want to send you something. I thought I sent you an email back. I thought I replied to your email. I didn't get an email. All right, so I'll see what's up. I'll send you the next one. Yes, please. Okay. I'm going to make sure I send you something. And Aaron, you never sent me your email either. I mean, your um, your address. I need your address, your physical address, so I can send you something. Thank, Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Lily. Thank you. I love you, Joshua. You. I appreciate you Thank showing you. up. Yeah. Good night. Nice. Stay safe. So I love, I love how you just did that because literally I think you explained it better than, you know, cause maybe I just was speaking about it and, but you explained it perfectly because spiritually, I don't think people realize like God be giving us signs. All the time. We just don't follow them. Exactly. Because we don't people, acknowledge yeah. this is facts. Thank you, Corey. Yeah, we don't acknowledge we don't acknowledge exactly what's happening. And that like I said, so I I was asleep, but in the process, God still woke me up and said, the sh the show still gotta go on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here we are. To, uh, yeah. You gotta continue. Uh, you gotta start, you finish what you started. And mind okay. you, because yeah. people don't even know I had talked to you yesterday <laughs> and you were saying I can't wait for ladies' night, and in my mind. Honestly, you played in my I'm mind like, too. I think I seen your face like, wait, oh damn, it is fun. <laughs> but I know good and well. So even like with you, like I told my brother, I said I needed to make sure I called you because even like right now, I haven't been responding on, and I normally try to respond to everybody, at least put a heart or something. Like it's because my energy is being pulled in so many different directions, and I, I gotta figure out how to get it back. But I know what happened. I know how it happened. And yeah, so now I gotta hone it back on in and figure it out. And I feel like um in a, probably in the next, you know, week or two, it'll be back to me and you know my soul situation. But as of now, I'm thankful for the help. But yeah. You you said a mouthful. That energy, that that thing has to be redirected, and it's either a thing or it's a person. Either way, whatever it is, it gotta go. It has to go, regardless of what it means to you. It still gotta go. <laughs> and I told my kids, I said, I need a break. Like literally, y'all are always. I don't ever want y'all to not feel like y'all welcome to come home because y'all are welcome to come home. But I need a break. I I, I need to be by myself for a hot second like literally i even called the oldest ones and i told them like i don't want nobody thinking that I, nothing's wrong i'm perfectly fine i just need time that's the only way i'm going to adjust that's the only way like i need to be by myself 
that's the only way you're gonna hear everything. Anyway. But you know, people people will try to like make it make it like it's against them. It don't have nothing to do with them. Nothing at all. Please don't take this offensive, but I need this right now. I need and I think right spiritually now. spiritually they don't realize it until it happens to them or and, and God forbid, because I don't think they would be able to handle it. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people don't realize spiritually the things that I have going through and the amount of or the energy that it takes to even deal with a spiritual warfare. You see what I'm saying? People will be in a fight for they'll be a true fucking drug addict, they'll be a true alcoholic, they'll be yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's all facts. Like for real, for real. If they never, if you never go through spiritual warfare and just the amount of energy that it takes, and that's why what I'm saying, like I'm fighting for my life. I don't think people get it. They, they probably thinking, you know, something different, as opposed to spiritually. Reality. It's it's stuff in the world. <laughs> For real, because most people think that like the everyday problems, the everyday thing. Well, insert the everyday thing and then add some mystical shit to it. Yeah. But see what okay. I'm, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna take you back. I'm gonna take you back. I'm gonna take you back. Because you say you're tired. Okay. Um, once you did the divorce, once it was signed off, it was time for you to let go of everything. Um, it's time to rest now. It's time to take a break. You've did your due diligence. You've done all that. You are over rewarding yourself. You know what I mean? You have you have reached that point to where it's okay. Now it's time to relax and find you. And to, but hold and on. Find, wait. wait and find you. Stop making excuses and stop beating yourself up because that's what's draining you. I don't even you I don't know. even know. I feel like because it wasn't to me when the divorce was over is when it was time to really work. That was when it was time for me to really put in like cuz now I got to get my surroundings back to the way my my surroundings have never been this. Like when I look out my it, window, household, yes. Like, like when I look out my yeah. window, yeah. my view is beautiful. It's not beautiful like it was before that person or before that situation got inserted. So to me, that is exactly that was the time for me. To, that huh? is exactly where you. That is exactly where you're supposed to be. That is yes. the reason why the person came to you and said about the happy part. The last time I seen you, you were happy. Before the person start and before they got here. Exactly. This is what makes so me happy. Now, now. It, exactly. So my, view my is, thing is you've been draining yourself doing other shit versus what makes you gain more and more of your energy. Yes, which is outside. Your view, earth, my house, nature, energy. Yeah, girl. Um, Corey saying we've had a lot. We had a lot of hand-on tie folks in your life for years. Not speaking on family, but others. I call them hangers on. <laughs> you look. Um, he said I, you've had a lot of hands-on meaning folks that in your life for years not speaking on family but others I call them hangers on be by yourself 
get a peace of mind, yes. And Kisa said, I'm going to log on YouTube. Facebook keeps pa pausing. Okay. Um, okay, Aaron, I got your address too. Um, that didn't just show up there, did it? I'm just saying, yeah. Okay, I hope that didn't show up on the screen, but I don't think it did. Um, he's saying, because he knows me too, and he was saying I had a lot of hangers on, like people who basically just want to be around just to be, you know, part of the, get the but that's that's actually true. And now I don't have that. I just have myself. So that's a fact, Corey. Um, but like you were saying, like my, to me, so then that me, that means work. And so we started doing the work to get it to where it makes me, you know, happy to clean in the clear and getting it back organized. And that's why I said today we just got rid of so much stuff and it's not all the way there because there's still stuff that has to be done. Um, but my happy place is my house and when it looks like it's supposed to and again, I'm manifesting something. I'm manifesting something here um, that's going to make me happy. Like when I can bring the people who like y'all closer to me and we can kind of just kick back and enjoy, you know, a conversation and us do this. Well, y'all are here, like my brother being here. You see what I'm saying? That's going to make me happy. Um, now I'm also learning to support who supports me. And so even in that process, I'm starting to get better. And that's why I said, you show up all the time. Lexi shows up all the time. Joshua shows up all the time. I appreciate y'all. Aaron shows up. Like, y'all should, like, it's people to show up. They show up in the comments as well. You see what I'm saying? And so that's why another reason why I feel like ladies' night is important too, because it gives everybody their time. Yes. And anybody can tap in. I posted a thing so that way people can come in, go as they please and connect with us and it's basically like us building our own soul tribe or finding our soul tribe finding our soul tribe yes and the people who's supposed to be here will be here and so that's what i was saying like even about the i'm um, tired part like i should be able to acknowledge that and it'd be okay you know what i'm saying but then when i got people saying okay, okay. You, you know no it's okay okay because you acknowledge it a lot of people don't acknowledge it yes and then you fucking end up dead or stressed out because your mind is your mind is what creates those heart attacks and this and that and the third that's your your thinking but if i put it out into the universe and i tell y'all that i need some energy sent my way i'm tired the love that y'all send um aaron says you're amazing and you're way too hard on yourself but so am i i mean because that to me, Aaron, I think is when you know better, you do better. I'm accountable. It's the, it's the emotions first, though, that you have to get in balance. Yes, definitely. But and even I, way, I, and physical. You know what I contribute that to too, though. Like after everything happened, I didn't show any emotion behind. Like I didn't cry. Literally, I feel, I ain't gonna lie, honestly, I, in my mind, I was thinking that after that divorce was signed off, I was gonna cry for about a month. And I was gonna give myself that. No. It took maybe a day or two, but then, you know what I'm saying, I was basically over it. But at this point, emotionally, if I felt like crying for a year, that I just gave that person, that I was 17. So that's why I keep saying, like, people keep trying to tell me how long something's supposed to take. I was 17 when I met that man. If I cry for the next two years, uh, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to tell nobody I'm sorry for it. I'm not going to feel bad for it. None of that. Because that's a lot of my life. That's more than half of my life. And erase it in 20 minutes. You can't do that. It's impossible. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It's hurt you. And it's not that I don't love the person. You see what I'm saying? So I think that's the other part. Like people just want you to get over stuff or you got to do this. Or you got to do it. No, I, I don't. And and no, for what? It's going to happen when it happens. I'm not going to try to force myself to say that I feel some way that I don't. That's the thing. I can acknowledge what I feel. Do I want to be with that person? No. But why is it that people want me to 
Like, why? And then the other person, I never asked them, like, why you want me to be something that I'm not? And why you, why you feel like you should insert yourself in my business? Because certain people choose to go that route themselves. Or they've seen other people do the same thing. Like how now certain people, they get a divorce or they separate from themselves. And what they do, they go hit the street. Sleeping with that person, that person, that person, that person, that person. But as soon as somebody who you say, "Oh no, I'm I'm relevant, I'm 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 good," they're gonna target you more because they want to continue to condemn you. And that makes but no sense. It, it, it makes sense to them. Oh, it doesn't. Well, yeah. It, 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 exactly. It makes total sense to them because that's their job. So it makes sense to them to go insert somebody else into your life when you get ready to damage that person as much as you're damaged because you didn't give time to heal, but yet you got time enough to go tell somebody else how they should heal behind a situation or in a situation. Exactly. Or you should get over this back. You should get over something that took more than half of your life this quickly. No, I shouldn't. But a lot of people ain't even went through it themselves. That's the other part. If you if you ain't been through it yourself, you can't tell me nothing. That's what nothing. I feel. <laughs> it's like somebody nothing. telling me. And then you, I want to hear you say you overcame it. If you didn't overcome it, I don't want to hear what the fuck you got to say. That hello, say that part, the overcoming part. <laughs> if you didn't overcome it, don't tell me nothing about it. Because me and you have some a similar situation, but you were married for twenty years. <laughs> So you were with that person. I wasn't married to that person for 20 years, but that's a long time. That's like, oh, yeah. That's a very long time. You not going to, and you could potentially be over that person in a matter, but it might take a while for you to really literally unpack that situation. And see, the, the other thing is, is people don't get it when you say get over them. It's not so much as getting over them. It's getting, it's forgiving yourself for allowing what you interact with within yourself. Girl. Now, forget never. Please forgive because this shit will hunt your ass until you are buried. Okay? So forgive yourself. Forgive that person. And forgive the situation. If you don't do those three, and I mean all three, don't just forgive him or her and forget to forgive yourself or forget to give the situation. Because you will never heal. You got to heal in order to better yourself. Especially before inserting other people into your shit or into your situation. You just climbing dirt on top of dirt, with it on top of bullshit. And that's what people think by getting over, okay, I'm going to get over this person by getting under that person. No, you just add it, like you said, dirt on top of dirt. Yeah, because then when you, you still realize that some of that trauma comes back to the next relationship. Exactly. exactly. And so that's the part where I'm saying, like, why do people keep insinuating or trying to insist that I let go of something or I do, like... That was my friend. I thought, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Not only was I married to that person, but I thought that person was my friend. But they not so not only did I lose my husband, but I lost a friend. But they all oh. been recovered, right? <laughs> At the end. And you really find out who your friend is. Yes. You really find out who's your friend, but I feel like that situation was still necessary. So, okay, now this it's, is me having something. Everything is necessary. It's, it's order for you to grow. It's order yes. for you to evolve. Yeah. And so now we have to figure out the next phase, but I wish people would, like, I, if I didn't ask you, please keep it to yourself. Like, or at least give me give me the, the sentence. Don't give me the riddle, because I don't got time for that. That's going to get on my nerves. What you gotta say. And if you think that a number or something else, like I'm literally dealing with way bigger shit than just 
talking about this. Like, honestly, I'm really dealing because you see how my YouTube stuff is going. You know what's happening. That's an energy that is trying to do this to me. Yeah. And meanwhile, I keep rising above it. I keep still swimming in a process. And I'm saying, God, whatever that is, get it. Get them, get it, get it the hell out of my way. And that's what and, and that's why I'm acknowledging the fact like I see it. I'm not gonna act like I don't see it, and I don't know why other people act like they don't see it either. Like I don't know why if you look at my numbers, we've been dealing with even the ten thousand mark. Like for some reason, I swear it's like been the longest number to get. Mind you, it's been four or five months. Literally, I jumped thousands in weeks or in days. And then all of a sudden, I got here, and now something happened to do this. And I'm not supposed to think that there's something wrong with that. Yeah. And, and at this point, that's what makes me, and, and I know I'm not supposed to do that. So that might be the wrong part. Like I just basically got to the point, but I started doing other stuff too. Okay. So this is not working this way. So I'm going to just make sure I do this. Um, and then I'm going to just go do this. So maybe that might, you know, not be the right thing in the process because again, but I don't know what to do. And I don't know what the right thing is at this moment. You see what I'm saying? It's almost like, the only thing I know to do is clean up my environment, get rid of whatever is around, um, go back. Like I walk my ground. I literally been walking my ground. That's what you have to do. That's when all the answers are going to come to you. And people don't understand. Like some of these things are literally like spiritually, I don't even know how I got here. I'm just going to tell you that. Like, I'm not even going to lie to you. I don't even know how I got here. That That's like one. It's almost like the Wizard of Oz. Like, I ain't going to lie to you. My house just got picked up and swept Where into a... Where baby? I swear. <laughs> We're just following the yellow brick road. <laughs> I still hear, like, I don't know who it is. But I wish, and I ain't gonna lie, y'all, and this may be the worst thing, but I just wish God would get rid of them. Because literally, I can feel whatever it is that somebody's doing or trying to do to me, I can feel it. And it's almost like I gotta shake it off. Extra clarity and show them faces. But why are you doing that? Like, every time I feel it, it makes me like, that's what I say. Why are you doing that? Like, why is. Why am I so important to somebody? Because they know where you're going. And they know where you're trying to get to. Leave me they, alone. They don't, they don't even know why they're doing it. Well, somebody's very much in like hoodoo, voodoo, like whatever, whatever. And I don't know if they realize I can feel when they're doing it. But I can literally feel when you're doing that. Exactly. It does this thing like I it's a it's weird. And then that's the other part. You heard me earlier say, like, maybe I feel like I'm even weirder. I'm I'm too weird for me. <laughs> you got the question yourself, like, what the fuck? You see? Oh, oh. Which makes me wonder, like, what kind of spouse could God potentially send me? I'm too weird for me. Uh, that's why I keep a pen and a paper. <laughs> so what is this person going to be like? And do they know? Do they? Are they going to? Because I'm not hiding anymore. That's the other thing. I'm not hiding anymore for anybody. You like it or you don't. Goodbye. I went to the club not too long ago. How was that? <laughs> Hold on. And you know, they got to check your purse and all that. I keep a little small purse when I go out. So I had a pen and a little, little pad in there. 
and the lady and the dude looked at me and he was like, What you need a pass for? What you need a pen and paper for? Don't you got a phone? So I looked at the lady, the lady said, You know all this shit that's going on in this world? You always need to write shit back. <laughs> And why aren't you questioning what's in my bag, people? <laughs> just because you don't you, you don't usually see that. You don't. Right. But I, I I'm always pen and paper. I don't give a fuck where I'm at, where I'm going. I, you never know what the hell you got to write down. You never know what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And you might not remember it the next day. But if you wrote it down. Yes, it's gonna all come back to you the next day. So I know I agree. I agree with that definitely. Yes, a lot of people go through shit and they forget. Like, damn, what was I thinking? Get that pen and that paper to you. Y'all, that's good advice. Like, literally, the best advice you could actually hear: keep a pen and pencil with you, a pen and pad. Always, everything comes to you. You may not pay attention to it, but when it comes to you, right there, sit down. And the biggest thing I could also say is pay attention to the things that happen around you. Um, Corey says, "Ty, so many, so many people wanted me to fall when I left Delaware. As long as you stay up, keep progressing. That spirit or person will fade, and prayerfully." You will stop having those feelings. I sure did. Yes. I, I pray that I stopped having them too because that would mean that these motherfuckers are actually going to go away and just, you know, live their own life. And that's the part that I don't get. Like, why are you so busy on watching somebody else's life? Like, I'm not watching nobody. Like, I'm trying to watch my own and do the thing that I need to do. I don't like it. <laughs> like, I don't understand why my success or not is in somebody else's business. Like, that makes no sense to me. But somebody is very much heavily invested in trying to like either They're force me to think how they want me to think. And I think that's probably what's pissing them off. Like right now, frequency change or something. Why do why did you know people not realize how boring this world would be if everybody was the same? It's the same. <laughs> it's nothing to look forward to. That, that, yes, what what the hell? They don't have a life themselves. I see. And it don't make sense because I'm not focused on them. Like literally, I do what I'm doing and that's it. I don't try to make my life better to mess with nobody else. No, I make my life better because that's what makes me happy. I enjoy good surroundings. Yeah. We left out of here the other day, and it was crazy because as soon as we got out, my eyes started watering. Like, I started having allergy attacks. My brother said, uh, I don't think you meant to be outside, but outside of my house or inside of my house, I'm good. I could be outside all day in my backyard and never have an allergy attack. We went somewhere else. All of a sudden, it was watery eyes. My nose was running. Um, it was just a lot happening that day. And I'm like, okay, why did that start? My eyelashes get ready to fall the fuck off. Like, come on now. So I don't know. It's just, I, I don't know. Um, Y'all just listen. You know I need sisterly love. You know, I, like I said, Send me, send me good energy, good vibes, y'all. Um, and okay, I got stuff closing out here on me. That must be time to go. <laughs> it, it literally yeah. popped up cold. Okay. Well, either Other way, than that, you, you are in the public now. So, what the picture they have portrayed to everyone. Now, when you actually have stepped out into the public, now they have to see that picture that they paint versus the picture that you really are. And all, all I'm trying to do is just live my life and do what I'm supposed to do. And I'm not trying to go right back, not trying to step on nobody. I ain't trying to do the wrong thing to get nowhere. Like, none of that. I put in the work. I'm doing the work. 
And so I literally am just looking at my own plate. That's it. Not looking at nobody else's plate. And now I'm adjusting my life for whatever it is. And again, manifesting 2024 that we're going to have our first. And it's going to be amazing. 2023 was just. Oh. Aaron, answer how do you make that go away? What, Aaron? How do I make what go away? Was it, uh, were you talking about the frequency change? And what do you think that is? Do you think that, because I'm going to tell you honestly, to me, what it feels like is somebody knows that I'm not listening to them. And so it's almost like they're trying to figure out what frequency I'm on in order to control whatever it is that I'm doing or to control what I'm thinking. That's what it feels like to me. Because why is it so, like, why does it happen like that? Because I can literally hear that. And what is that? Energy. Go, <clears throat> go and search. It's the littlest thing that you have not gotten rid of. It's Grabbing the littlest thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. What is in your vision is what you've been throwing away. Huh. It's something that is not as I said, what you've been throwing away is what's in your, in front of you in your vision. But what well, I, you're I, missing is something that you're missing. Like you came up with the ring. That's frequency. <laughs> that's a camera. That's watching you. Physical. Girl, let me tell you, I had got rid of my, uh, like, my, I tore down my whole security system that was in here. Um, because literally something was happening. Then the cops came, they told me to change the uh, Wi Fi shit, right? Change the Wi Fi the next day is when that nigga popped up talking about, you're so lame, something, something, something. Oh, so you was watching my crew system the entire time. So I tore that whole camera system out of here. Um, and we just got put up new system, a new system now. So, but either way, I don't know. It's just a bunch of weird shit. Like I'm not that invested in nobody life. I'm not going to look. I don't care. Um, if we didn't make it, we clearly didn't make it for a reason. Okay. I'm not going to go look. We're forty-four on the clock. <laughs> yeah, apparently I wasn't meant for you. So why would I like? I don't understand how people do shit to you, and then all of a sudden they want to like keep up with you and this I'm not gonna keep up with you because I'm here. It I'm was gonna go meant. I need to do. It was meant, but they didn't succeed. Like I said, they came they came prepared for the war. They won the battle but they didn't win the war. And they're mad as hell. Well, I'm not gonna give nobody no other chances and that's gonna be the end of that. So that's why when people be talking about old things in the center there, I don't want to talk about nothing old. I can talk about the experience. I can talk about how to kind of heal and move past that. But don't talk to me about no old ass relationship spinning the block for none because I ain't doing it. Get somebody else to do it. And at this point, I don't have a relationship from my past that I would even think about it. You see what I'm saying? So now the good, good part is everything is brand new on the up and up. But that's what I'm saying. Like, what type of person is this going to be? Dude? Are they going to know that I'm this <laughs> the next person comes along, they gonna they're going to know. They're going to know because you have healed and you're constantly healing. Are they so not going to think that this girl is person, like... That new person is going to see the new you. Like I said, when you go back to the emperor card, where you say you ain't never seen war on it. We, we, didn't, we didn't did the emperor card. We all have priests now. So been there, done that. Definitely. We know what to look for now. And we know what we're going to accept and we know what we're not going to accept. Well, that's the best anymore. Since I got you, we buy them from day one, not for a while. So I'll send positivity and prayers away. Thank you. I totally appreciate you, Corey, and I love you. Yes. All right. So, y'all, we're going to bring this to a close. Larissa, you want to close? Yeah. It's me and you. Thank you for closing out with me. 
energy, 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 baby. Thank you. Uh, you always self care. Yes. Find yourself self care. Pay attention. And y'all know the birds in the clouds always send y'all messages. Pay attention to those too. She she ain't never said nothing wrong. That's a fact. <laughs> Every day, all day, even the night skies. Know your clouds because they always send the messages. That's so, why they quit. Um, yeah. So well, Aaron said those energy sources outside of us. Well, making sure your protection is up. Larisha, what you got? Um, um, Aaron says, how do you make that go away? And she says, those, en those energy sources outside of us. How do you make what go away? Let me go those energy, energy sources outside of us. Like when people are trying to invade our space, and I, that's why I was saying just making sure like um, you do prote protection. And uh, Jesus said, love you and love the message. Thank you tonight. Um, she said, thank you. Gotta cleanse, you got to cleanse your space, first of all. Cleanse your space. Cleanse you. And keep doing it, because literally these motherfuckers keep, keep doing, doing it. Don't don't do not do it one day and just, oh, okay, I'm clean. No, it's a work in progress. Like I said, you cannot erase 20 years in 20 minutes. It's a process. Yep. Trust me. When you get to the other end of the road, you're going to know why you're going through what you're going through and why you went through it. And it's eventually stuff starts to fade away because as everybody knows, God always got us and making sure we're okay. Um, but again, faith without works is dead. So we still have to kind of do stuff for ourselves and make sure we're not allowing access to us or to our things from other people as well. So I and do like... We're not here to work our ass off. We're exactly. here to work, but we're not here to work our ass off. Yeah, Whatever period. is draining you, it is not for you. Period. That's why I was saying, like, listen, I, I know for a fact. That's why I said I'm tired. So something is yes. happening. We got to be mindful because sometimes people get sent in that look like help. And like I said, it could be in the form of young damn kids. Exactly. Especially you, when they, they, they that's when you know you're close to something. If they start invading in on your kids and your spouse, you know you're into something. You just stepped in some shit that they don't want you to be stepped into. Yes. So keep pushing. Yes. But like I said, if it's draining you, that's not what it is. It's something else. Well, uh, to Quiet me, it's and find out what it is. The thing was, and this is where I even kind of um, acknowledge, like, because I was telling them before everybody showed up or before the energy showed up, I was over here minding my own business. Then all of a mm -hmm. sudden, people showed up and things started to, like, my energy started to be a certain type of thing. And I'm saying, mm-mm. Mm -mm. And this is the thing, adult children, if you raise them right, they don't belong to you anyway. They belong to God. So if you know you raised them right and you gave them all the tools, you should not have a problem with giving them back to God and moving them out of your space. Because mm -hmm. people will like uh, say, you know, oh, those are my kids, so I can't do this, that, and the third. Those are your kids, but those are God's kids. And if you know you raised right. them properly, put them where they belong, which is not in your space. Mm -hmm. That's because right. again, if I'm being worked on with God, he can't work on me with me with them and you know all the other stuff because they're adults. They bring their own set of energy. Okay, better rock, better child, baby. Um, Kisa said, How do you cleanse and rid yourself of it? Um Kisa, matter of yeah. fact. Yeah, self care, self care, and that's like Find doing baths, things of that nature. Like, cause certain things will work for certain people. Cause guess what? You can go take a, a jump in the ocean, like sea salt. Salt is purification. 
And so when she says self care, she like literally she's not joking. It's literally cleansing yourself, making sure that you're using certain types of uh, oils and things of that nature, um, or salts. What else do you use, Larisha? Because I use salt. I mean, I use the salt. I use the lavender. I use the roses. I even throw some carnations. Um, I'm I'm I use different type of herbs. <laughs> Yeah, uh, de definitely different types of herbs, essential oils, yes, but making I, sure it's the right ones for your skin. Yes. Um, you say yourself. I do, a spa. I do a day spa every two weeks. At Palo Santo, your area. <laughs> um, listen, yes. I ain't gonna lie. I did a whole motherfucking like when I was walking the area. Salt. So you Without can do your socks and your Walk on some grass. Go hug a tree. Yep. Oh, grounding is definitely the best. Surround yourself with like seashells, like even on my front porch, like wind chimes, things of that nature, because it gets rid of the energy. Open up your windows, go through, make a whole bunch of go noise, ahead. basically like bang on some pots, clear out the energy. Like you got to get stuff moving. Even if y'all got plants in y'all home and they're dying, it's the energy in the home. That's the yep. other thing I forgot to say. That's a fact. But you gotta make so, sure you open take, up, open up take the those plants, throw them motherfuckers out, and go get you do. Or or actually look it up and see if you can bring them back to life. Because if you can bring them back to life, then that's a, another thing that would show you that the energy's changing too. Yeah. See, but y'all gotta open it. I tried that and I'm honestly I'm I'm not gonna agree to that. What you didn't because like no, because I told you was that about a month ago, I tried to regrow. But see, people that are in your home and they put things inside of your dirt, so you have to be careful of that as well. It's the reason why your plants are dying. It's energy and people do things to the dirt that's inside of your plants. Only reason why I think you can regrow them is because literally I did it. Like I um I started like doing the leaves, like cleaning off the leaves with um mayo, and because they were growing some type of white stuff all of a sudden out of nowhere, and yeah. so I think that was like a fungus. But I literally started taking care of like the the plants itself, not making sure of how much I was watering it because I think I was maybe you know doing that because oh. I don't have the water in it, so. Mm -hmm. If you can, yeah, then you can. Can reach his own, like you know what I'm saying, as far as that's concerned. Yeah. So, yeah, because I if they did something to the dirt, then that's one thing, exactly. A lot of people don't understand that. Either. People go get the dirt, graveyard dirt, and then yeah. don't let people into your space. So, that's the other thing. And then people that's was doing that graveyard dirt, yeah. shit, and then they realize when them spirits turn on they ass, then they be looking stupid, real dumb. I'm picking up great the people that they don't even know they ain't ask nobody nothing like literally just go digging in the, and you gotta ask it's almost like literally getting permission from the universe from several different things can i do i have permission to do this exactly yes. so it's yeah. a lot of stuff that people do and they just feel like they can i'm a, i can just do that no you can't you didn't ask permission no, and you didn't, and ask then, permission. Listen, Cause sometimes permission ain't granted. They don't want your energy That's and paying right. attention to people be trying to touch you. Don't be letting everybody touch you because people be trying to steal. Yes, ma'am. Even though they try to look you in your eyes, baby. <laughs> you can't be handshaking everybody okay. and everything else unless you got a perfect lock on that motherfucker. Cause if you already know you're going to expel some energy, don't let yes. nobody shake your hand. But if you already like, know you got a lock on it, for certain people, you you lock that thing down, and then all of a sudden, I'm not giving you nothing. It's, it's a like a, and you ever seen that? Like it's blank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, baby. Oh no, oh no, oh, no. Oh, no. The lady touched my leg at the nail really? shop. Right, I went to go get my thumb toes done. The lady came up and. I had on a dress and I don't know how for the life of me, this lady even made it to where my skin was, but she literally put her hand on my leg and instant she snatched her hand back. I think she realized like. She's hot. Get, get like, your ass back. She's not the one. That's right. Listen, 
That's right. And I looked at her and she was, but literally it was like blank, like keep your hands off me, bitch. Like yeah. where you, where do you just walk up and touch somebody? Like yeah. who does that? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. But it made me laugh because after I got home, I was cracking up because the people don't even realize even that. I went to the nail shop one time not realizing, and this was when I first lived. Baby, that's frequency. People don't get that neither. Girl, didn't even realize I was bleeding out. Went to the nail shop and came home one and freaking Vietnamese food. I'm on this bitch like, just that fast, then picked up this lady energy. And it made me realize, like, girl, apparently you was wide open today because what why listen yeah yes. now i'm in that lady energy yes because she put her yes. hands on it. so some people y'all have to realize how sensitive y'all are to you well, know I, just I, that I, touch thing people don't get that and they just be talking to people and laughing and giggling and touching i'll be like girl <laughs> 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 Now oh shit! Now y'all here doing some hood rats. He don't even know why. <laughs> Baby, people don't understand. People do not understand. I swear, a lot of people need to wake the fuck up. Then she's not wrong. Yeah. So a lot of times I we just gotta pay so everybody is here for a reason and a season. Oh, and I don't know if you can like if y'all can get y'all hands on this, but brick is also good as well. It's that red brick. Red, then you can order red brick powder too. Um, I think you order that online, but that's really good. But if you notice, some people put brick around their house, like literally, it'd be things that be right in your face, and you don't yeah, even know. You don't realize it. Yeah, a person has literally got a whole camp locked the fuck down. All they did it, they did it with brick. So even like when you think about like your grandmom's house back in the day, you don't even realize like those plant hangers made of seashells and all this other stuff are protection. That's it. That's it. That's all. And now I got a big thing for wind chime. So I'm like, I don't know why. Well, I know why, but literally like that's my thing now, especially on my front porch. And so that's one of the things I was, um, I'm painting my front porch now. And so I don't know what I'm gonna put there yet, but <laughs> I literally then did the whole front porch and like see? so now it's all painted, but I want to put the little curtains and stuff up there. You look you'll see it, Larisha, when you get here. See us now? You see us now? Your whole impression changed. Because it's my hot like my house is my happy space, like it's yeah. designed for peace. Yeah, and when it was chaotic, I like how did you bring chaos to a piece? Like people think my house is like a spa, cause it is. Yes, right now it's, it's not house. looking like the spa that it was designed to be, and so mm -hmm. but it's getting there. It's getting back. It's coming. It's coming back. Yes. Yes. Slowly but surely, and my brother, I really so much appreciate him because literally he he came and he did a bunch of shit that he did not have to do, and. Everybody helped, you know, kind of, because it would have taken a lot more for me just to do it myself, but I'm going to get it done. Oh, and yeah. my energy is going to get back to the way it's going to be, and I'm going to get back to doing my 1,000 readings a day and all that other good shit. But right now, I'm just, I need good, positive energy and... You. Me. Amen. I need me. I need me back. Yeah. Well, not back. I'm okay with the new, the new and improved version. I'm improved. I'm I'm okay with the upgraded version. I just want to find out what she likes because I don't know what she likes. You will. So and you already know. I don't know. That's the thing. It's so. I you better listen. Now. You hear me? Keep saying I'm even more weird for me. <laughs> I'm even weird for me. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Like I'm when you, not lying, when you be I'm outside, when you get outside, and that's the other thing. Stop going to the same to the same places. I don't go, go to places. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying. Not you in general. Oh. I'm just saying. 
Stop going to the same places. Stop going to the same store and whatever. Switch it. Go to the east side, the west side, north side, south side. And That's that way, you, you're going somewhere different to find something different. Well, I'll be glad when and I then start that's how you're gonna discover what it is you like. Well, I'll be glad when I get out because I ain't I'm not out yet. I ain't been out. Like my brother come in, me going somewhere, like excuse me. Honestly, I've been here since 2012. Do you know how many people I know? <laughs> like that's I okay. do not I you don't know how many people know you. How many people know you though? I don't know. Maybe yeah. more, more than what I know, but I tell you what, to me, this is my space. This is my sanctuary. This is like when exactly when people come to me because I have everything here. So this is where we be. This is this like Safe you'll, haven. See, you'll see. Um, that's why I say I know you are looking forward to your future. I am looking forward to my future. Listen, yeah. I'm so excited about my future. Like, that's the other part. Like, I don't understand why anybody would say that. So that's what was throwing me off. And I maybe, like, when I said, maybe I get right. asked, um, if they're saying, don't worry about who I was, don't worry about who you were, worry about the new thing so I could get it in that aspect. But I don't get it if anybody is, you know, on the other version. So I just went with that. Like, okay, so the new me, the new version of me, I don't know what she likes yet, or I don't know what she wants to do yet. Although I know that I got to kind of clean up the mess first before I can kind of tap into the new energy. So the mess is already cleaned up. It's huh? already cleaned up. It's already cleaned up. The mess is already cleaned up. It is. And December the 31st was the deadline. So that was the thing. Because remember when I was talking to y'all, I said that I know whatever happened to me when I first glitched happened. December 31st, December. January 1st of 2021, 2022. This is now getting ready to go into December 31st, 2023, 2024. So I feel like the transition and the new phase and a new chapter starts then. Um, why everybody's or anybody would be heavily invested in what happens, I don't know. I, for people who love me and care about me, I'm thankful that they would be. But for people that don't know me, it's That's because the deadline is coming, like you just said. Oh, the the, the thank you, Aaron. The deadline is coming, so they're coming from all each and every direction because they yeah. know the deadline. Like you said, something has to be done before the ball is up. Yes, and so that portal, that change is definitely that starts the new book, um, and that is the beginning of my future so although i'm at the cusp or the brink of it i haven't mm -hmm. crossed it yet right. um the cross to the next stages before your case was even finalized yes i was mel but that's a that's a fact mm -hmm. um you right. ain't been stuck in the past nor holding on to it and i don't know what them talking be, uh, believe you it, exactly that's what i said so right. Right. Maybe people see something or maybe people just, you know, want me to stop talking about it, but I still might be talking about it next year. That don't mean nothing about it other than the fact that there are people that Larisha, 20 years of a marriage is advice. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like literally you could that's a teaching platform. That's a testimony. Why that's do people right. want you to forget your testimony? Like I don't know what's happening with this new group of people or like what is happening, but ain't no testimony without a test. First off, that's what I'm saying. And what makes them think that it's like, okay, the test, you passed the test. Ain't that time for celebration. Yes, ma'am. So that's the thing I don't get, but the test still made you like, that's the thing. Yes. So I don't yeah. understand what's up with these people or what they talking about. And maybe like it might be good for them, but don't bring that it over. Goes, it goes back to what you say, the parents, the great grandparents used to tell you. Uh, I don't want to talk about that. But how it needs to be talked about. It? That's the only way you're going to learn if it's talked about. And how are we going to expose it and, and be done with it and clear it from the DNA? We got to clear it out of our DNA. Yes, ma'am. 
in order for it to actually, for you to really be a generational curse breaker, you have to now be the thing that clears that code out of your DNA. That's right. And the only way you clear that code out of your DNA is exposing it and talking about it. That's right. And you keep covering it up. It's the same DNA code from back then. Keep going and keep going. It's like an energizer bunny, baby. Keep going and going and going and going until you get the knowledge that you're supposed to dig into. Yes. You and so that's the problem. I don't keep I don't understand why people don't think like why do y'all think these people that are talking makes any good sense that don't make no good sense to me. If I keep covering it up, that's the same shit they did. That means you still helping the generational curse. The generation and and making your ancestors suffer for it. Yes. So now let's shed light on the situation and let's now move forward. Let's clear the code. Mm -hmm. Let's clear the code. Yes, ma'am. So the next, the next generation don't have to deal with that trauma because it don't exist anymore. It was there. We talked about it. It happened, and now y'all get to now open or be open, more open to not dealing with that or not falling victim to that. That's right. But as of now. We're going to keep falling victim to it if we don't talk about it because it's going to keep like, why are you protecting the uncle that is doing molesting the children? Like, why would you do that? Protect the fucking kids. Mm -hmm. You don't got to protect no grown ass man. Or the uncles and the daddies that got kids by their daughters or their granddaughters. Thank you, Aaron. Exactly. Because again, (laughs) that could have not happened. But from where I'm sitting, that's what I got from it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That don't make sense. Like the way that it's being worded, or the way that it's being. So again, it could have not happened. She could have told us though, but she chose not to tell us, and now we don't got nobody to tell us. But she could have cleared that up. But it had been too easy. It had been too easy. So it'd now just gotta think whatever. No, you're not thinking whatever because everything is going to come to you because everything is going to make sense. Well, that's what I'm saying. So as of now, the only thing that I got is what I said because that's what I called my aunt and I told my aunt, like, something's not adding up. And then they went to talk to her and then that's what happened. So why is it that we're going to keep protecting or keep covering up when how are we going to know who we are if you're not telling us who we are? Like, in my mind, I'm thinking you should be able to go back generations after generation after generation. You should be able to figure out where you come from, not just because, you know, ancestors say, oh, well, you got this much, this, that, Russian, this, this, the, the you know what I'm saying? Percent of this and a percent of that. Yeah. yeah, but why can't I just know who your mama is, who your daddy is, who they mama and who they daddy was and who this was and who that was? But, you know... It's always the auntie that know everything. That's no, just not say anything. Well, but they know everything. It's always that one, that one child that knows everything. Girl, these these ladies be so conflicted. Like I, girl, if you knew, yeah. I'm I'm trying to tell you, they, yeah. they just can't Baby. get together. <laughs> They just cannot come up with it. Like to me, I'll be wondering because I'll be talking to them. I talk to all my aunts. I love them all. And that's one of the things I even say about like the kids. I don't kind of, I'm not interfering in because they were sisters before I, I was here. Mm-hmm. But girl, they just can't get it together. And y'all sisters, like I'll be thinking, oh, I wish I had some sisters because it would be this way that and girl. Mm-mm. 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 No way, Jose. But my dad and them side is different though. They, you know. So, but you can trace their family back a little bit, a long ways. But my mom's family, like their sides, I don't know. We can trace them, but. That's all you're doing is tracing. Girl, and they look, listen, if I show you this picture, I'm going to show you this picture and wait till you see it. You're going to be like, what? (laughs) Because girl, you can, you can tell, like, wait till I show it to you. You're going to be like. (laughs) 
This shit is creepy as shit, though, because it gives me like questionable vibes. Oh no, they, they don't look like they was fucking meant to play with. I'm trying to tell you. Like when I show you this picture, you're gonna be like <laughs> yeah, and one of them looks just like my grandmother, but the whole thing, like they look very wealthy and everything, but they don't look like no group of people you wanna fuck with. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When I seen it, I was like, Who them is? Look <laughs> them pay you. No, I was looking like, do you know what they look like? Like, <laughs> and it could have been the way the picture was drafted because you know them old school pictures, but the old pictures, yeah. Y'all giving me dumb but people. They, but but <laughs> you know black, what I'm and saying? black and white is the real shit, though. Yeah, y'all giving. I think I might have got to post it on my Instagram too. So, matter of fact, I gotta go see. But yeah, they giving me dumb people vibes, like. Don't 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 go playing around on a front porch, okay? Exactly. <laughs> don't do step that. Don't step on the sidewalk, man. Which made me more curious about them. That's the thing. But I don't know. You're on to something. That's all. Well, I'll be glad when I figure it out. But anyway, look, we didn't we're still went past the time, y'all. We Larisha and closed and we still here. So but I know like an hour ago. No. <laughs> no hmm. You it's, know I love you as always, and I totally appreciate you. And I thank you for being you. And y'all thank y'all for you know understanding why ladies night was you know a little late, little late. <laughs> it, got, it was on time. It was on time. Amen. Was Amen. On time. Um <laughs> I love you guys and thank you for being here. You have been looking forward love to you it. Too. <laughs> exactly. And you know we'll be talking anyway, so yes. Yes. See you guys. Get you some rest, my love. You too, honey. Yes, most definitely. I've been up since 6 30. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> like hell no. Nah.